What's going on? What's up? How are you? You hear me okay? Yeah, I got you. How's, everything, go? How's everything going, man? Good, you? Good. Getting close, oh. getting close to showtime. Yeah, like five and a half now, yeah. Oh, shit. It's almost crunch time. No. When do you start feeling it? Four weeks? Or you don't really feel it now with Patrick? I don't know. It depends. Like, I... I don't, there won't be any point here where I think I have to like push down to the point of feeling like really bad. So I'm not, I don't think that'll ever happen. Yeah. Nick, what's up, man? What's going on? <laughs> so uh, Nick, me and Ian are talking about his prep. So uh, is it a product of Patrick's diet that kind of sets you up that way? Or have you always been like that? No, I mean, like, I, I think. I think the biggest thing is just I stayed a little leaner in the off season. I find when I've stayed a little leaner each off season, I haven't had to kill myself obviously to get into shape. Cause I mean, the, the road is a lot shorter to travel. Yeah. Um, and then my food stays higher. My cardio stays lower. It's just easier all around. So like I stayed in pretty good shape this off season. So I really, I mean, and you know, like previous years where I've got a little like sloppy, I mean, in the off season, it definitely made it harder and I felt it more getting closer, but I haven't had to, and I won't have to do that. I don't think so. Do you think you needed those years though? Because I always wonder about that. Because I know like guys like you and and James and that, and I don't know Nick. I, Nick, did you ever get like a bulk, like a heavy bulk phase? Do you ever go through one of those? Oh yeah. So I always wonder. Like I went through, oh, yeah. I went through those too, and I was also leaner as I got later on in my career. But I always wonder, do we need those to get to the size we're at? I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, I, there's a good probability for sure. I mean, obviously it's impossible to go back and do both. So like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't regret ever doing that. You know, like I, the only year I regret it was 2019. Um, th that off season, I got like a little crappy and it made it really hard for me to get in shape for that Toronto pro, which looking back was the biggest missed opportunity. Cause I think I could have easily beat John at that show. Um, and, and I missed winning that show. And that was the year that I didn't end up getting to the Olympia. Like I missed it by one point, you know, cause it went down to that show with me, Dexter and, and Luke yeah. Yeah. Uh, at Tampa. <clears throat> so, I mean, hindsight, if I stayed a little leaner that off season, you know, I think I could have looked considerably better in Toronto and then may maybe have won that show, which would have changed a lot of things. But I mean, it's like, you know, I don't regret it by any means. It's just no, the reason I'm asking is there's always like this constant, um conversation yeah there's a constant conversation about well, not bulk yeah. greg Doucette does the main gaining thing which seems to work i think is definitely the right way to go for the average person or the natural person mm -hmm. um i think the conversation on our end becomes can you get to freak status like that really big open class bodybuilder can you get there without having a couple years or a few years somewhere in your career where you bulked really heavy i'm sure you could it would probably just take longer that's how that's what i think about it yeah it's it's kind of like it's possible it's just how long because i know a lot of guys who've done that who tried to stay leaner in the off season they just never seem to get too big though no they yeah don't. they move up maybe one class like they started as a middleweight they go up to light heavy but they never get like that freak status mm -hmm. so that's no, you definitely you definitely need to really like whether the the science supports it or whatever you know like you need to really push the food hard a few years, like heavy, hard training, you know, paired with lots of food for a couple of years to really build that foundation, to really push yourselves into the upper limits of size. I think for sure. Yeah. yeah. I guess we can, I guess the way I put a kind of a, a point on it is to say, I think everything Greg's saying is right. But like I said, I think it's more for the average person that he's talking because his audience is more like the average person. Yeah, they're not top tier bodybuilders. Right? Yeah, and or or maybe natural guys also shouldn't be like getting super sloppy just because it's going to take that much longer to lose it. But yeah, okay. Well, I just want to I want to kind of cover that because it's always a conversation that keeps coming up and coming up, and I don't think we've ever like really parsed out why we're doing it or who who's who it's meant for. Yeah. So I think I think a lot of it like you know it's it's a twofold thing because I think one it comes down to when you're really pushing the food 
it pushes your ability to handle training output, right? Like, I mean, yeah. in terms of how much you like weight moves weight, the more food you can get in you, the heavier you can get, the stronger you can get. I mean, these things are all going to correlate into growth, right? So I think it goes from that side, just from the calories and then the calories and what it does to your training kind of paired together are what yield that growth, you know, and mm-hmm. you do that over a few years, um, you know, combined with obviously for competitive guys hitting a few couple good rebounds, I think is an important phase as well. Um, I, th- I think that's really where all that growth comes from over time. Why do you think, actually, I just, I thought of this, you said rebound. Why do you think guys are competing so much when they don't have to, I noticed guys message me and they're like, I want to go back and win the show. I lost blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't like, when I think of it, I'm like, this doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of your career. Like nobody cares if you lost like your first show, if you're going to turn pro one day, you know, what I, I, mean? I, I agree with you, but you're looking at the mindset of someone that's been to the Olympia. So, I mean, you're, you're talking about a guy like you that had a career as an upper echelon bodybuilder to these guys. That's obviously a far. No, but I'm thinking, no, no, I'm thinking of it. Like then like these small shows and like, you know, getting a small title at this, that they didn't win. Like these are the big victories to them that aren't to us. No, wait a minute. Let me, let me just correct what I was trying to say, because I thought like that when I was an amateur, because I didn't, I won, I won my first two shows, but I lost my third show. Yeah but I didn't go back and try and win it. I just moved on to the nationals. So I'm like, I don't know why anybody would waste their time doing a show that doesn't, if they're trying, if someone's trying to be a pro, why would you waste your time doing a show? That's not going to get you there. I agree with you there. Yeah. Okay. So that's because I kind of see this thing. The only time maybe I would agree with doing more shows than is necessarily like conducive to like the long-term thing is if you just really, really can't seem to figure out how to get like peaked and get in shape and you're just using that as experience, you know? Like to get on stage, to do those peak weeks, to, you know, experiment with different things, to find a protocol that works, you know, things like this, I think can be important, but I also think that you can do that alongside a proper progression, you know? Yeah. Nick, how's the new house coming? It's good. You got you got feel more comfortable. Got pictures on the wall. Got anything moved in? <laughs> no, but I got my TV hung up though. <laughs> it's not on the floor anymore. <laughs> no, it's hung up. What's life like as a twenty-six year old pro? I keep forgetting your fucking age. Are you twenty-seven yet? Twenty-six. I'll be twenty-seven in August. What's life like as a twenty-six year old pro in in twenty twenty-one at the top of the game? I mean, it's good. I mean, I, I haven't really thought of it like that. But <laughs> you've never, you've never. It's it's weird. Do you ever take a step back and think, "What the fuck am I doing?" You never think that. No. Really. You do you ever do that? Me. Yeah. Yeah, all the time. Especially like that, though. Like, but like, there's a Not... difference. Between, there's a difference between thinking like, "Wow, what am I doing?" Like, blah blah blah, versus like, "Holy cow, I'm 26 and a bodybuilder and live in Florida." Yeah. Like, that's a, that's a very weird level of introspection, you know? No, when, <laughs> when you say it, when you say it like that and you make it all weird. And yeah, With the head <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I've thought that before. I, I, I like to step out of myself and look and go, I don't know. Cause I think of my friends, right. And like my friends are working normal jobs. And so when I was 28 and I had a muscle tech contract and as a pro bodybuilder, I'm like, I would like step out of my body for a minute and go, that's pretty fucking cool. Like I get to do this yeah. for a living. Like this is fucking yeah. awesome. Like I don't have to go work some shitty shift work somewhere. Like, no, and I'm, and I'm sure we've all had that epiphany. Of course. I'm that's like, kind of what I meant. Sure. Like, like, yeah. you know, that's kind of what I was getting at is do you ever step yeah, I mean, out, you talk to your buddies that you maybe haven't seen in a while. And like, you know, you, you like can see like the air of, you know, like fascination intrigue they have with your life you know yeah Yeah. like you can tell like what you're doing is something special you know and like something that's not normal and that people look at as like a dream jobby kind of thing you know you don't ever do that you don't ever step out and go like step out of your mind for a second go wow you know like i built this whole oh i i I, I built this whole shit like i got this nice house i got a a nice wife i got a like a you built you built like your own little castle you know like your own little empire I think I guess, yeah. I guess for me, it just hasn't really sunk in yet. Like yeah. everything that's happening, you know, because we just started prep for the Olympia. So now I'm like, oh, Olympia time. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. It's been very, like, a very like expedited process, but not for you because, like, obviously your growth as a bodybuilder wasn't just like happened one day. Like, you weren't like, yeah. you know, where some people might think, like, Nick came from nowhere. Obviously, we know that didn't happen. But then once you won, 
this show and the Olympia and like your meteoric rise has been very condensed, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Like you, you came from being like turning pro to then having good that. And then all of a sudden it's like Nick's top guy at the Olympia, you know, like yeah, that, yeah. You know? things happen very quickly. So you know, that, it's a lot to like take in and also think outside that, you know? Well, the reason I, the, the reason I would think outside that is I think of like landmarks in my life. Like when I bought my first house, mm-hmm. Like when I bought my first house, I would step out and go, wow, you know what? Bodybuilding bought me this house. Yeah. So it's kind of like, uh, that's when I would take that introspection and go, oh, holy fuck. You know, like. For sure. I've had these thoughts. Often. This thing, this thing where I just started lifting weights in the gym, bought me this fucking home I'm living in. Yeah. That's the, car, the moment. I have the house yeah. I have. Right. Yeah. All these things I have, I bought. For, I that's, bought that's why I was asking Nick. Cause I'm like, he just moved into his new home. So does he ever sit back and go fuck man it's lift, lifting weights bought me this place <laughs> well just because you were you worded it like a single guy in Florida. Like, you no know? i didn't mean it like yeah, that yeah, yeah. <laughs> well i also meant it like that i'm like 26 top yeah. of the game new house a lot of groupies coming by yeah. a lot of, you know like that kind of shit too i'm like <laughs> is there a lot of is there a lot of squirt king shit going on or is it like pretty <laughs> Tum, tum down right Not, now. no it's pretty it's pretty chill at the walker household right now <laughs> why why is that I don't know. I just, I like my privacy right now, I guess. Yeah. So I'm just chilling. Just focused on bodybuilding. How do you Pretty focus much. on, how do you focus on a prep? This is one thing I was never good at. How do you focus on a prep when you're trying to like hook up? It's, well, it's, well, what do you mean? I mean, I could be very vulgar here, but. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like. Let me, let me see I'm, what you mean first. I mean, like when I'm prepping, I don't have time to like try and hook up and like all that shit i'm just like i, I can't be, i don't want to be bothered with it so it's like easier to have a girlfriend you know what i mean like i don't i don't almost, in, in the flip side to that thinking it's almost easier not to have a girlfriend because you don't have to worry about tending to them and their emotions as well yeah but then when you want a piece you got to like go to all the trouble of like taking somebody on a date or like trying to get them to come oh, over. You, you go on a date i'm yeah, just saying <laughs> no one said anything about dates man we're talking about girls coming over to nick's new house <laughs> him having sex with them and then them leaving that's the best thing it's like yeah, you, know, you don't have to worry about tending to the wife and the girlfriend you send over a text yo what's up they come over you do your thing they leave and you're back to your privacy is that how it works I'm, yeah i'm in prep man there's no there's no taking them out to dinner there's netflix no. and chill you got to go oh ah, that's nice yeah. that's that's a, that's a, a, restaurants come on i've never had that before <laughs> i don't think i ever did that what yeah, just, I don't. Th- you never just had a girl over. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think back. It's been so fucking long now. See, I've been with Melissa as long as I've been competing at like a high, high level, like since before I turned pro and stuff. But before that, like when I did some like amateur junior shows, like when I won junior nationals 2011 and shows I did in 2010. Yeah, I mean, it was like like I said, it was just like your your mind is not interested whatsoever in pursuing relationships. Or like yeah. the work that goes into it, you want as like quick and easy as possible, and as little thought as possible. Ding ding. But that's like kind of guess. I guess where I was getting at originally. Is it that easy for you right now? I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> easy enough. You've learned. You've learned from getting in trouble on the podcast before. You're like just those. I've gotten things. plenty of trouble recently, so. I'm not- <laughs> Guys, the same way. I think everybody. Trouble. Every, trouble. I was just gonna say you got yourself in trouble, Ian. What the fuck, man? It's always me. What'd you, what'd you do now? Because the way you talk, Ian said that this fucking bodybuilder who will remain nameless. No, okay, I'll tell the story. Right. It was on the episode you were on. This episode, I think, weren't you? Yeah, he was. We were talking about the episode where someone asked the question: "Make a bodybuilder with the worst body parts from everyone." So we joked like Dave Palumbo's stomach, and like I don't. Can you please not recap? Just leave everybody's name out of it. Okay, well, no, but, I got to know the name. Except for the guy you're talking about. Okay, but oh, wait, I said like Dave Plumbo's stomach, my calves, like joking things, you know? And then I, so we were getting to chest and I, c- look, man, you put in the position, you got to give an answer. And it was just the first one that popped up. Looking at his pictures, okay, it's not that bad. There's definitely worse people with worse chest, but it was just one that I had in my mind, remembering that when I thought back, I'd like, oh, I didn't always think he had the best chest. So I said this guy's name, this Aaron Politas guy, the this Australian guy, and he's a cool guy. Like he's fucking, you know how these Australians are. Like they're fucking, you know, funny, whatever. 
Yeah. So I've a couple posts about it, like chirping back at me and, you know, like, but all in good fun. Like, I, I don't know how actually pissed he was, but I mean, it was kind of just like, you know, funny, but it was, yeah. It's always you, Ian. It's always me, it's but because, I, I think it's be the, my delivery, you know? It's the delivery. It's because it's so blunt. I'm so like, abrasive with my delivery because I just like, I get a question. I just answered. I don't really think about like the repercussions. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this, but he came at you, man. Look at this. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> he boom he did i'm like his chest is better than yours dude <laughs> and that shot it looks good yeah. people know i love a bit of a shift sir worst chest worst chest in pro bodybuilding okay i didn't say he had the worst chest in pro bodybuilding it was just one that came to my head that was not a great chest well, that's a pretty good chest i mean he could yeah, be this shot, it looks good it's, it's funny because then me and mark were talking about this and saw it and mark's like i don't know what you're saying man this chest actually looks kind of good in some of these shots i'm like fuck i don't know yeah you sometimes you well, it seems like he he was he's all in good fun though no he was he messaged me after oh, two yeah weeks. yeah he didn't like <laughs> look at you he is trying uh, to he's like fuck he's trying to like, <laughs> <laughs> <"Suffer calves>. i <laughs> can't say my <laughs> Well, this is, it's actually my fault. I have to apologize because I cut that whole section out of the video, but I forgot to take it out of the audio. Oh, really? <laughs> so that's why it took so long for him to get yeah, back to him. Yeah, yeah. So like so many people watch the YouTube and then it was like, because this was, must have been four, five, six weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, it was like four weeks ago, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it was, a, it was an accident. I, I chopped I totally like, yeah, you guys can't trust my editing skills. I chopped hey, well, Aaron, it. Aaron, I've looked at your chest more. Critically now, your chest is not that bad. I apologize. <laughs> is his chest better than yours? Uh, I'm not than... trying. Don't say... be honest. No, no, no. Answer it. <laughs> Answer it. Answer it. My chest now is better than that, but I, I don't. I think I was is it better than his. Ian, yes or no? I'm not answering shit anymore. <laughs> let's, take, let's take another look. <laughs> what do you think? Hey. Okay, just to defend my point, the only picture I had seen that made me think this is go back to his profile. Yeah. And wait, go down that front relaxed one there. Yeah, it's high. It's a high, a higher chest. It's just like a higher, flatter chest. So like when I looked at this, I was like, oh, it's not a great chest. So it was like just this was fresh in my mind at the time. It wasn't this specific picture, but it was one similar to this he posted. Yeah. It fits it fits on his body though. Like everything's pretty well, I mean, the guy plays ninth at the Olympia. He's not a bad bodybuilder. I mean Yeah, I mean everything's proportionate, right? Like yeah. is that him there? No, that's no, uh, that's him over here on the far right. Okay. Yeah, it's a higher chest. It's just the inserts higher, that's all. Yeah. Yeah, it's up on his on top of his ribcage a little bit. Um, well, good. I'm glad we got that squared away. It's always cool though when somebody's cool about it. Like he didn't seem like he was like actually upset. No, I mean so I mean, look, for anyone that, that's on this, I, and if I do upset people with these things, I'm just trying to give answers. Like, I don't want to beat around the bush on every question, trying not to upset people. I'll just give my opinion. If it upsets some people, well, I apologize. But, I mean, the show would be really boring if none of us ever voice our opinions on anything ever. So, give True. me some fucking slack, okay? True. We'll give you credit there. All right. Let's cover uh, Puerto Rico. What did you guys think? Good. It was good. I mean, <laughs> guys t turned up it was a good show can i can i say it was way deeper than i thought it was going to be agreed it was a good show yeah. like i i thought we were like when we first started talking about it like i thought it was a three-guy show and that was it yeah but weeks ago i remember we kind of skipped over puerto rico we were talking about chicago a lot yeah we and then all of a sudden i realized there's actually a lot of good guys doing puerto rico and then it turned out to be a really good show yeah. Every, everybody's in pretty good shape yeah. so let's go over them a little bit what did you guys think of the placings this is the yeah. top three they made sense. I mean, you know, you could have made a case. I mean, Siobhan looked fucking awesome. You could have made a case for him winning too. But I mean, Akeem, I, I would have, I had Siobhan. Yeah. I mean, you, I, I really? did a lot of cuts too, but I, I understand did. with Akeem and the level of muscularity he has. Akeem's a lot bigger. Yeah. I mean, in the side, in the shots, like the side chest and the side try, he made some ground, you know, Siobhan, I think in the front double has a nice cleaner look, better quads, nicer midsection. The king's uh, stomach was faded. Okay, wait a minute before we before we go on. I just one at a time. Let's explain to the explain to the people watching uh, Nick first. Why did you have Shaban over Akeem? Um, just for me, I just think overall conditioning and presentation was better. Um, he had better control of the midsection, which you know they clearly blatantly uh, point out all the time. Yeah. I think, um, yes, Akeem was overall bigger and had more size, and his conditioning was good. I think it was 
just as good as the Olympia, if, if, if people agree. Um, but overall, I just thought Shaban was better. So can I ask you, Nick, before we move on to Ian's opinion, is the main point of why, like, let's say Akeem's back was a little bit more conditioned. Would you still be saying the same thing? No. If, if Akeem's back was more, more detailed and his stomach didn't look a little spilled over, this Akeem would have, in my opinion, won by a long shot. But Shaban, I just think he presented himself a lot better. Overall, like stomach yeah. and the back and everything when you tie everything yeah. together. Ian, how do you feel about it? You feel you think Shaban won? Yeah, I mean, it's, look, <clears throat> when I watched it, I, 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 in my mind, my eyes went to Shaban. You know, yeah. his quads are impressive. He has a lot of detail, like his midsection is very detailed. Like you see a lot going on, even yeah. though it's not necessarily super deeply separated. Because I think Boo really like pumps these guys full of food to really get them super full like that. Yeah, I think he loses a little detail compared to two weeks out, but I think detail wise, he's definitely the best of these three. You know, he's comp- like literally has no nothing missing. I mean, his quads are good, his midsection's tight, his lats are good, his chest is good, his arms. Are good. Yeah, everything matched. There's I think nothing- my. There's nothing bad where, like, Akeem, it's like, okay, he has more muscle, his arms are better, his quads from the side, like, his side leg is awesome, you know, but his midsection's a little fuzzy, his back isn't as detailed. So it's like, even though he has more impressive, impressive things, he has more things to me that are less impressive. Where Siobhan rides like the eight out of 10 the whole way, Akeem will have a few nines and a few sevens, you know? I can, I can see what you guys are saying. I think my assessment is. Where look, Akeem, look, I just want to say it. I'm not taking away th- anything away from Akeem. I think no, he, no, 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 no. Akeem no. deserved the win. This isn't saying that, you know, Shaban was like way better than him. I think it was close between the two. I understand the decision. It could have gone either way. I'm speaking to my yeah, opinion. yeah, hundred percent. Um, I think my assessment. When I look at that, like you look at the front lat, my eyes are immediately drawn to Shaban with the amount of detail he has. Yes. So listen. So are fucking awesome. My assessment is this. I think. Akeem's body parts that are better are a lot better. Like he's got a lot better arms. He's got much thicker chest. He's thicker got def- he's got bi- bigger legs. But I think you guys are right about the stomach in the back. I just don't think Shaban's back is that great that it's enough to overcome. I agree. I mean, the thing. He no, I agree. Is, his back is weak for sure on, compared to the rest of his physique. Oh, yeah. but it's, it's not the strongest. It's not as player. good as his, as like his legs, for example. Legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, like I, I get it. But from a detail standpoint there, when you look at that bottom one, you know, I, I think Hassan's got a better back there. But I mean, detail-wise, there is a significant detail difference between him and the key, you know? I don't know if, I mean, in the back, yes. But I think, but yeah, I, mean, I, I, I just. Even in the hamstrings and glutes is, you know, still nice and detailed there. I know in the side shots, he was better in the side shots. So, I mean, look, I, I get the decision. I'm just, yeah. you know, it's, it was close between the two of them. I, sure. I would definitely agree with you guys. It was close. I just, I, and I so think. Look, look that lot there. Like to me, Shabon stands out very clear. Well, you're all, I think you're only saying that though, because his ab development's a little sharper. It's yeah. just more detail. Yeah. Quads are more detailed. But I don't think, but I guess my, I guess my point is I wouldn't give somebody a show based on ab detail. But no, his quads think- even look bigger and more detailed. Than I can. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I think it's. Get the fuck out of here. Look at his. I don't think so, man. I think it's just the color, right? Like Akeem's really dark, so it's like I don't no, think it's even. Like, I think his legs are bigger. I don't think so, man. Let's see. Let's see if I can find another shot. His legs are huge, man. Yeah, they are pretty big. Akeem has good quads and really good adductors, so his legs look wider from the front. Where Shaban just has look at his quad. look at Hassan's legs. Yeah, Hassan's ridiculous. He just so. Until okay, he so, gets that conditioning in the glutes and hands, he's he's okay. So wait a minute before we move on. So you guys. Although you agree Akeem should have won, you think Shaban could have won and nobody would have argued? Yes. Okay, yeah. so you guys agree with the placings, but you just think if they flip... If Shaban won, yeah. no one would have said anything. I, I think okay. most people can agree with that, that Shaban was good enough that it could have... I think could've... I agree with that too, yeah. I agree with that too. So did Hassan... I think I think Hassan is the best this show of all the shows he's done this year, even though he still needs to be sharper. Yeah, a lot sharper. Uh, let's go back to this shot. Um, Nick, first, do you think Hassan deserved third? In that, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of it's kind of far away. So let me see. Yeah, if I can a little far one. for me. <laughs> see if I can find a better one here. He has no leg detail. 
Well, I think it's a conditioning thing, and I, I, I just don't – I don't know what they're feeding him, but I got to see if I can find a better um, – well, can you can you blow that one up a little bit? Just go to his Instagram. No, go to go to Hassan's and go to his tag. There, yeah. He's in definitely in better condition than the other shows. He is, but I just there's still uh, something missing. But yeah, yeah it's, it's not there for me. Though there's some cross tracings on the suite. There's still not big detail right up to the hip. Yeah. You know, it's, there's, there is some things missing. And then this is the front is better than the back conditioning wise. His glutes and his hamstrings are where the lacking in conditioning is most apparent, you know? Yeah, I agree. And I think this is like there, his, his glutes are just no, there's no striations whatsoever there. It's still, it's, it looks soggy. Yeah. It's, it's not, not even funny. funny. And I know Aceto says that they fucking annihilate this guy to try and get him down. It's just, you know, very, very difficult. But, but I think that's the problem. I think they're, I think it's too hard. I don't know, man. I think it's a strategy. Like, I'm not. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I'm a better coach than Chris Aceto. I'm not. I don't want anybody to be like, oh, like you're you're, you're pretending you know more. But yeah. what I, all I'm saying is, when he said he was eating nothing but protein, I'm like, something's wrong somewhere in your prep, either in your off season or in your prep, where you got to a point where all you're eating was just protein. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like I don't know anybody who does that. No, so me neither. Especially a guy that size. That's exactly. what I mean. So it's like, I don't know if he's getting too fat in the off season or if he's like the, the prep is not leading the way it needs to early in the early stages. Yeah. But something's going wrong where he's, he's well, not. Me, the thing that confused me the most is like, this is his what four show of the year. You'd think four shows in you'd re- those glutes would be starting to get tight. You know, I don't know if they're like <laughs> over using too many diuretics or something, but like, no man, he's just not ready. Yeah. No, 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 no. I know there's still fat to lose, but like, Maybe they're trying, maybe he's not ready and they're trying to get it off with trying to think like get the water off, thinking it would yeah, be better. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't. So, yeah. anyway, so he took third. I think it's the best he's looked, but I was really impressed with um, Theo. Yeah, Theo's good. Let's see if I can find a shot of Theo. Actually, that's a good closer. Uh, this, this shot there, that back lat, I think is one of the shots where Shabon loses the most ground. Because his I, back, in terms I of- actually think his back looks better here. I think it looks great. No. Compared to Akeem? Look at through his upper like back and stuff. Like he has the least thickness by no, far. No, Ian, I don't think you're looking at that properly, man. Look at his lat come down all the way into here, whereas Akeem's kind of like disappears. Yeah, look at the difference in thickness through the mid back, and look at like uh, Musta- Hassan's thickness in the lower. Hassan, left. Hassan's got the best back out of the three. The bond is w- getting wide, but there's there's a definite lacking in thickness that the other two don't lack of there. I agree with the rom like Akeem's got thicker rhomboids, but. When I look at these three laps, upper lap, like back, everything. When I look at these three, Shabon has the best, this the best of these of these three in this shot to me. I think because of conditioning, but I don't think because of muscularity in his back. Mm, I think Hassan has the best back here. I think Akeem. I, I think if anyone, if any, if anywhere, if Akeem's losing ground anywhere, it's this shot and a back double. Back yeah. double, I agree with you. I think Shabon beats him in the back double, but I think the back double is a pose that shows off the detail as the, the predominant thing where the back and I, it flattens it out like he loses the detail and then doesn't have the thickness. It just looks like he's posing weird too. Yeah. The only guy that looks like he's kind of in it there is, is Shaban but or is uh, Hassan. Hassan, right? yeah. Um I'm I need to see if I can find a photo of Theo. I didn't realize there, bottom middle. Yeah. I didn't realize Theo was this big of a human. Well, I have like, to say something about that. I know he's that. standing way over the line, but still. Like. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Every shot, and I'm not saying he's not this big, but every shot I've seen, even stand, people are going to think it's crazy, but even standing a foot closer can make you look that much bigger. 100%. And he's over the line in every picture I've seen. Yeah. So I actually wonder how big he is if he was standing in line with those guys. Like, is he... Instagram, does he ever say what his weight is? Oh, that's his Instagram. You're on right there. Just click it. Does he say what his weight was going into the show? Let's see if we can see something here. It's all in French. That's okay. Well, we'll just need to see a number. That's all we need to see. Here's a physique shot. He's got to have oh, something wait, there. That physique shot there? Keep going down. No, nothing more there. No, man. Judging by the size of him, if he was a little sharper, he could have easily been second. <coughs> Agreed. Like this is. Yeah, he looked really good. Like I want to know this guy's weight for like and height. You know, this is um, like 
the only difference I see here where he's losing is just the detail in his quads and also his tan could have been a little better. He looks like someone like a early 2000s, late 90s guy, and I can't put a fucking thumb on it, and it's driving me insane. I just think Siobhan looks really good. Yeah, Siobhan looks sick. Yeah. Okay, but do you think Theo could have won? I mean, it's hard to tell because he's standing. No, it, it looks like his legs like detail. Yeah. yeah, he's not flexing his legs right there, or if he is, they're lacking detail. But I mean, he's no, 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 no. no. I know. Let's assume he was 100 percent shredded. Could he win the show? No, <sighs> I don't know. I mean, it's it's hard for me to conceptualize it, but yeah, I mean, some shots like it's just tough because he's not standing on the line. But like, I'm looking at these pictures and I'm like, he's better than everybody else. I, I disagree with you there. Like in the side chest, you can see like, you know, his quad and, and hamstring developments. I'm sorry. I think Shabon looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, you made it clear. You think Shabon should have should have won? <laughs> yeah. Keep going. He's yeah. in shape, man. He's in shape. It's just something's not something's missing. I could have seen. I, I, I need to find out how big this guy is. Keep going down. One second. I don't think he poses his weight. He needs a little bit thicker chest. Every bodybuilder posts their weight at some point. Come on. I know. But I don't no, know he, no, he did. I saw it in one of his posts. Oh, he did? He, he did somewhere, yeah. Yeah, what about that one? No. no. What about the middle bottom? I, I need to know his weight, he says. Like, it matters. Well, just because I need to, I need to have an idea of his size next to these other guys whose weight I know. And if it's just an angle thing, or if this guy is like six foot two seventy on stage, you know, he doesn't put his weight in his updates. Yeah, that's crazy. I always say my weight. That's a Same. throwback. That's a throwback. Let's see. Ah, there we go. Two eighty. Two eighty. Yeah. But two eighty in March. And he looks like he's five ten, so he's probably two fifty. I would say stage. how tall is he? Yeah, he's probably two fifty on stage because yeah. I mean he's in good condition here, but he's not. No. Uh, I say 255, 255, 260. Yeah, 255, I'd say, yeah. Yeah, he looks like he's got 25 pounds there, max. So, yeah, he's probably 5'10", you're right. Yeah. All right, so now we figured out his weight. Theo, you think? correct us if we're wrong here. What do you think, I'm Nick? just saying, I was 250 on stage. Well, that's why I said the weight doesn't matter, because there's a lot of people who are 250 on stage, but always looks different on everybody. And no, then he's taller. But if we had found a picture of him and it said that he was 230, then I'd be like, okay, well, this guy just has a crazy angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I That's what I want to know. Like, yeah. I just need to know if he was. He's I definitely get... taller, though. I can't get over the size of Hassan's quads. I know. <laughs> this is so stupid, man. It's the it's... sweep side of his quad. It's just, like, so big. It's it's just like, look insane. At his next to Akeem's. It makes Akeem, who has good quads, look like he has. No I know. <laughs> Shaban's quads look good, too. Shabon squads are the best, yeah. Because they're big. I'm just saying. Lots of detail. They got a lot of detail in there. Ian, do you, I mean, Nick, do you have, you have something going on with Shabon I don't know about? Are you, guys, like, <laughs> are, you guys, are you guys boys behind the scenes? We are friends, but I, I just, I don't I just he's a, he's a good He's a good I dude, man. Believe, I couldn't believe watching your the thing. He said he'd only been training since 2015. I know. What I know. in the he's, fuck is that? I had a lot of fun talking to him, man. He's and the way he spoke about his dad, like almost made me cry, man. Oh, this middle picture, go to the middle, no, up there, middle, yeah, no, down. Sorry, down one. Yeah, this guy, Rob Cannon. Go to his back shot and look at yeah. his hands and calves. I know, I know, he's good. What the fuck is that? I know. I saw this. I was like, I gotta sign this guy. These are some thick ass hamstrings. And Who calves. is that? Some British guy, Rob some Cannon. British. Rob Cannon. Really? I mean, he's only two thirty two in this pic, so he must be on the shorter side, but he's fucking. Dense ass little guy, man. He's following you, Fuad. You should follow back. He looks crazy. Yeah, toss him a follow, Fuad. <laughs> don't you give him a follow. Don't peer pressure me, you fucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. man, he was good. I saw that picture the other day of his the back one. I was like, holy shit. Um. Okay. Wait. I want to see if I can find the other. These are so small, man. I don't know how to fucking. Okay. Yeah, so, that's... oh, that's uh, Andreas Presti or whatever, I think. Yeah. Is that, yeah, I said Andreas just... was going to be good. You guys all fucking shit on me. No, bro. you said William Martins, and he's not even in. He was seventh. No, I know that, but I also said him that he, he could be good. Oh, wait, I forgot, what did, what I did forgot, Jamie get? I forgot we have the, I forgot yeah. we have the picks. I lost horribly. I don't want to read mine. No, I'm going to read them. Nick had Akeem Shaban Haywood. Dorian Haywood was third. Yeah, he was here. Hassan, Hassan fourth and Muzi fifth. Well, you got Muzi, right? Muzi was fifth. Yeah, mine. I wasn't too far off. No, you weren't. You just threw. You threw. I was wondering why you threw Haywood in there. No, but Muzi was, Muzi was six. One, two, three, four. 
No, it oh, says no. right here. Muzi, Muzi was fifth. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Sorry. Um, and then we had, I don't know how Theo ended up in sixth. Yeah. That's not, that's crazy. That Andreas Presti guy must have been much better in person. Well, I mean, his conditioning's good. Like he's a bigger guy. I, let's I've go, seen... let's go see what we can see if he's got any photos. Yeah, he looks good. Yeah. It's a big fucking hamstring. And I thought, I mean, his conditioning is good, but I thought Theo had like a, a fuller. You know what I mean? Like it, it seems a little yeah, thin. He's obviously his quads, especially in those four, you know, are, are lagging. But I mean, look at his top half. I mean, that's a very impressive, like midsection, lat, chest, arms. Oh, great midsection. Yeah. He's got a very nice top half. His back. His legs off. are just lagging. No, yeah. I thought they got to be consistent though, man. If, if you're going to take Dwayne Walker and put him in ninth, because okay, these, are, small... these are better legs than Dwayne's. No, 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 no. I know that. But I'm saying like you're taking somebody with small legs and putting him in ninth place, right? Because he has small legs. And then you have a guy like Theo who looked pretty fucking awesome. And you put him in sixth and put this guy in, in fourth. And I'm not saying he doesn't deserve fourth. I, you have to be there to really be able to see. Yeah. Because I don't know what Theo looked like in real life. Right. But yeah, I mean, his legs need to catch up to his upper body. Yeah, agreed. I'm sure he knows that. No, no, I'm sure he knows that. I know, but I'm saying like I know, I'm just saying. placings <laughs> wise. <laughs> I, I didn't know. I didn't know Theo took six. That's weird. Wait, there was a better one. What was I looking at? Wasn't there a better? No, I think that was it. So Theo took sixth. Andre Presti. Okay, so you guys are okay with him being fourth? Who Presti? Yeah, I'm okay. okay. Nick? Yeah. I mean I would have I would have probably swapped Muzi and, and Theo, and that's about it. So you would have had you would have had Theo in fourth. In fifth, and Muzi in sixth. And Muzi in sixth. Oh, but okay. Inconsequential, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, that's weird because out of those three guys, and please, uh, Andrea, Andrea Presti, please don't take offense, but out of these three guys. I feel like he would be third out of them, out of those three. Uh, I disagree. He jumps out to me the most. Uh, you're like the quad thing I get, but the rest of his physique, I still think is the best, the best. And I think he was in the best condition of the, the three of them. Hmm. Nick, you agree? Um, you those are some really small legs, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. I would have lowered him. You would have lowered him. Yeah, I mean, it. I don't. I just, it is hard with. He that. looks fantastic, but like when, that top legs really, like when the top the three, legs, are, the legs stand out. Yeah, especially when that top three has such good quads, it does make it. For, look good. Yeah, but shots here, you can see Theo doesn't look as good in that shot, and Andre Presti looks better. You can see the difference in conditioning here in, in Theo's. Yeah, Theo's level of conditioning and Andre's Presti's conditioning is very good here. And I know yeah. Moosey's conditioning from the back was not great. So I see what they did. So they looked at all of them and they're yeah. like, and they're like, Andreas, Andrea Presti is. You have to, you have to admit the though, best in conditioning. Photo, in that photo, Siobhan jumps right out at you, you know? <laughs> Siobhan, baby, look at him. <laughs> I, I'm not disagreeing. Listen, to me, Siobhan has the most traditional bodybuilding esque physique. The amount this guy's like, in is pretty fucking impressive. He was like 220 a year ago. You, know? you, you used to. Had, I know. have bad things to say <laughs> yeah when he was a nobody and beat me and now he's good so i don't i don't feel as bad about saying it now but yeah i beat siobhan yeah i i think if, if i think if siobhan had a better back he could have won that show that's the only that's the only area i could see any weakness my boy william martin's got pushed down pretty far he was seven yeah what was jamie ninth uh, i think yeah ninth really i think so let me check i don't want to Really? Uh, this, Not... only, this only goes up to sixth. Go to Jamie's page. He says, okay. I know he needs size, but he looked really good, though. I think when he's standing next to the shorter guys, he's still looking a little bit too streamlined. Yeah, but it's not bad. Look, look at that Abin Thai, though. Go to the Abin Thai picture. What does it say? He'll say his place, I'm sure. That's not a bad shot, man. Oh, no. This is after prejudging. He's looking through fifth through ninth. 
I remember seeing the placing somewhere. I want to say he was ninth, but I'm, I'm not positive. Those are some pretty nice quads. Yeah, I think he was ninth because I think uh, William Martins was seventh. Uh, I think Robin Strand was eighth. And I think uh, Jamie was ninth. I got it here one second. No, I'm telling you, that's <laughs> it. I, I'm telling you, I, I remember. That's it. I'm positive. There's Andrea Presti. He's no, good. dude. No, dude. That's the fourth place. Look. Okay, so Ian Nix Ian Nix disputing your Yeah. Ian, I mean, come on, bro. Yeah, I'm not saying he should have won the show, but I think out of those three guys, he was the best of the three. I think out of those look three that, guys, he had the best conditioning. Maybe that's why they that, look at that leg, it's like flat. So yeah, William Martins was seventh. Uh Robin Strand was eighth. Jamie was ninth. Dorian Haywood was 10th. Boy. Camilo Diaz, 11th. Uh, that was my pick, hey, too. Hey, what do you think? William Martins looks good here. What he looks awesome happened? in the side shots. What do you think happened? I think he uh -huh. loses a lot of ground on the front shots. Think so? Do, you have, do we have pictures? Yeah, it's his front, his front double is where he loses his midsection. is a little weird shaped. I don't think we have any other stage shots. Go to his tag. Uh, yo, yo, is, oh wait, what's this? What's this comparison? Oh God! <laughs> oh God, what? He looks better than me there. Here, <laughs> go to the middle one, the middle picture. Yes. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. And then we got Jamie here. You see, yeah, Jamie's still a little thin through the top. Yeah, yeah. He's got really good legs, though. His legs are good. You know, obviously he's got good waist. He's just his his upper body needs to be a little thicker. Mm. Dorian Haywood, I think he looks the worst of all the shows here. I agree. Yeah, I was not too thrilled with his performance. And then uh, Robin Strand, the newest Canadian pro. Looks still, still got some work to do. The midsection needs a little bit of work. Chest needs to come up. Legs are pretty good. I see William wins that shot. Well, yeah. You probably that shot, but front double front double will expose anybody it's yeah. the it's, yeah, it will. it's it the just, one just, it's the one pose it's, where it's, if you have any weaknesses they'll fucking be shown yeah 100 robin looks good in the side shot here yeah he does he needs more shoulder a little bit more arm left side leg looks good jamie needs some hamstrings yeah <clears throat> My voice cracked. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Robin's back, and he's got. I, I haven't seen any like great, great backs in this lineup. Jamie's got a good back last for him. Yeah, he does. That's actually a good shot. He works with uh, Jordan Peters, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, what do we think about uh, we would we wouldn't be fair if we didn't cover the two twelve? Ooh, let <sighs> just touch on it real quick. Uh, somebody asked me, they're like, "Are you going to cover Guy the way you cover everybody else?" I'm like, "Yeah, I am." So, I think Guy just looked a little bit off. I mean, that's all there was to it. He was flat. He was flat. I think um, the other guy has was nice and full. He was prepped properly. I think guy's conditioning wasn't bad. He just wasn't full. No, he just didn't, he didn't eat enough. He was flat. It's not, it's not his best showing, but I'm sure he'll bounce back. I agree. So it happens to everybody. I mean, yeah. fuck. He he is, you, can, no, way, you can see he's conditioned. It's, he just looks flat. Yeah. Like, this is a thing. Nothing, nothing pops. It's I a read, water thing, it looks like, to be honest to me. I read some what? of these. I read, Go ahead, Ian. Say that again. It looks like a water bounce thing to me. He looks like he's like super flat, but from like a not drinking enough water or having enough sodium kind of look, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Where your skin gets kind of that like velvety soft look. It's it's a diuretic or like a water issue, you know? Yep. I read some of this comment section and people are actually really like big dicks, but... Uh, I know. He got fucked up on that. I just think it's funny. I mean, if you look at any, and I'm going to use you. We as an all example. have bad showings, man. Ian, I'm going to use you as an example. If you look at Ian at Tampa Bay, 
and how everybody roasted him and then look at Ian at the Olympia and how many people fucking rode his nuts. Yeah. It's like just I think bodybuilding fans need to learn that like it's we all have a bad showing. Sometimes like, you hit it and sometimes you don't. Yeah, they have the, they also have the memory of fucking goldfish. So it's like the second you fuck something up, they forget everything else, you know. Yeah. But people so, just yeah. need to understand not every showing is gonna be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people are like, oh, just like every prep isn't the same. <laughs> people are saying, like, oh, he should retire. And I'm like, look, at 38 with two fucking shoulder surgeries, yeah, his probably crazy. his his prime is probably behind him. But that doesn't mean he should retire. It just means he had a bad outing. Like, yeah, the next show could be completely fucking different. So I, 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 I think believe, I, I think yeah. I think guy can correct it and come back and be fucking awesome. I think he just won bad show, but congrats to the winner. This guy won. Actually looked very, very impressive. Could be sharper, could be more conditioned. Really good shape and some nice like bubbliness, roundness. Obviously, yeah, he needs to be three to five pounds lighter to be really peeled. But I mean, it was good showing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's got good good muscle bellies, good muscularity. Yeah, he needs to you be ever, a you ever to look at a guy and like look at his face and be like, this motherfucker is European as shit. Like this guy, look at him. I'm like, this guy is not North America. <laughs> <laughs> Like, dude, look at that face. This guy is not from North America. It's like a, yeah. it's like a World War One movie. Like, yeah. Like the- <laughs> this guy is not from our side of the world. You're 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 right. <laughs> anyway, well, I I think, and as far as the other two guys, I thought this guy looked okay. I don't know. I mean, at this, this guy what? Fifty three. I mean, that's incredible. He's fifty three. He looks like this. He's fucking in good shape, man. He looked awesome. And this guy looks okay, but he just obviously needs more muscle. He's still a little yeah. bit thin. How, how many shows are after this now? We got Chicago, the Tampa, uh, Portugal, 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 Chicago, Tampa, Dallas, Texas, and the Dallas show. Yeah. So I think Guy. Uh, I hope I don't get in trouble for this, but I think Guy is going to do Tampa. He's talked about doing Tampa, so I don't know for sure if he's going to do it. So nobody fucking get mad at me if I'm wrong, but. He talked about possibly doing Tampa. So I think he can correct that, man. I think his conditioning is good. I think, you know, being a little bit more full, a little bit more dry, everything's going to look way better. From so, where he is I, now, that's not a hard fix to do in five weeks now. No. No. So, uh, Nick, yeah, you had Haywood off. Ian, um, Akeem, Shabon, Martins, Hassan, and Jamie. You really, sh- you really shit the bet on that one, Ian. Did I, did I do better than Nick or worse? Worse. Oh, I won, bro. No, you didn't. No, because you got, I, I picked, I picked uh, William who placed higher than Dorian. So I think I, I did better. I think I did the worst. I think Guy did the best. Really? Yeah, I picked Akeem, Hassan, Shaban, Martins, and then Jamie. Okay, yeah. So, so I got me and me and me and Ian both got two wrong, but I got the, the second and third wrong, so I fucked that up worse. Yeah, yeah. The guy. Pick Akeem, Shaban, Hassan, Muzi, and Presti. He got them all right, except he flipped wow. fourth. <laughs> he That's got them all right, except he flipped because fourth. We were all fucking, we were yerping on him when he made those picks. We're like, you're fucking stupid. <laughs> but <laughs> in our fucking Jamie, you're going to fuck these guys up. In our defense, he was totally guessing. He didn't even fucking remember. He was like, I don't even know who those guys are. I just Maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was just fucking playing coy. He knew exactly what he was doing. The British guys. Yeah, they gave me and guys shit for not picking Jamie. <laughs> I watched it, fuckers. The British guys. James picked Akeem, Jamie. They all had, they all had Jamie in second. Jamie in second. Listen, yeah. Jamie's second, though. Come on. They all had Jamie in second. Uh, they all had Shabon in third, Hassan in fourth, and Martins in fifth. So they did worse than us. They all picked the same. Yeah, they all picked the same. Yeah, they did worse. I know. I watched it. They were all like, yeah, yeah, I agree. I was thinking, I'm like, yeah. man, I'm like, you guys are way a fuck off. <laughs> like, You're like, yeah. I didn't go along with it. I was like, no, okay. I know you did, but they did. Yeah, they're. I know. I noticed. It's just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I'm in the when I'm on this podcast, sometimes I feel like it's like a social experiment because like you can always tell how people are gonna vote. Yeah. Based on the other people in the group, it's just yeah. it's fucking funny, man. Um. Okay, let's do some questions. If I can get them to come up. There we go. Okay. You are all still competitive bodybuilders. Would you rather have finger-sized nipples or nipple-sized fingers? Finger-sized nipples. 
Probably nipples. Oh, nipple sized fingers would suck, but like, fuck ask, me. Ask, Mel- ask Melissa. <laughs> or nipple sized fingers. What, what, answer for yourself and as well for what would you rather have me have? Nipple sized fingers or finger sized nipples? Oh, I'm trying to envision this. <laughs> in her face when she realized how bad it was. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. Just like. You know? Yeah, but if you have nipple sized fingers, then it's like you have a little fucking nub. You can't do anything with your, you're literally just That's like this. You have nothing. At least if you have nipple size, if you have finger sized nipples, you can like tape them down. Yeah. You would still see it as a girl. You would see it all. No, you tape it down and put like a thing over it and wear a sports bra with like padding. Okay. I'm going to go with the finger sized nipples. Yeah, I am too because I want to have my fingers. She's putting something in her bra right now and we're going to see if we can see it. <laughs> Experiment time. Is it, are you putting a pen in there? That's the size of a finger. Yeah. Yeah, but you can't bend the pen. Yeah, but that's hard as shit. You have bones in your finger, you fuck. Yeah, but you can bend them down. You can't see anything. Oh. See? Look at her show. Oh, there. <laughs> yeah. oh my god. Wow, okay. <laughs> it's a, you're, so that's that. Well, so, we think. Wait, am I already married? <laughs> oh, that's right. That's true. Like, am actually. I already married? No, well, you're not. no guys want to gonna want to bang you. Because I feel like yes, hundred percent. If yeah. you're single, that would suck as well. Yeah, Nick, but what, then, what if you're at the bar and you're like, hey, and you got like little nib, like you know? Yeah, that would be weird too. <laughs> like you, if like Ian asked you to go to dinner and you showed up and you just had like nipples for fingers. <laughs> wow. Wait, they're just the no. Size. Wait, you know what? Even I think whether I was single or not, I would still want finger sized nipples. I agree. How would you ever do your hair? How would you blow dry and brush your hair with no? Because think about it, Melissa. You could take him to dinner and like make him like you and all that shit. Smooth. And then like after like five dates, you're like, look, I got fucking finger sized nipples, and it's yeah, too late. Then you could probably like we could probably have sex the first time. And you just like keep your bra. On. Yeah, you just keep your bra on. <laughs> that doesn't work with me. What'd you say, Nick? That doesn't work with me. Well, you'd have to you have, you have to take I, the bra. I, I like to suck nipple. So, what would you do that if the nipple was going off? Yeah, but if you but if you, but if you took the really but if, you have a lot to suck. But if it was a finger sized nipple, would you still suck on it? No, nah, that'd be a turn off. You got to go. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would instantly make my dick go soft. Would yeah. she? What if the girl showed up to for Netflix and chill, and she had nipple sized fingers? Well, I'll get some jerking off that night. Get the fuck out. What if, the rest, what if the rest is like a 10 and then just that? Nah, dude. Fingers are like, mm, can't do it. Okay, Nick, let's say you have to pick. Girl shows up. They're both 10s. One has finger-sized nipples. One has nipple-sized fingers. Who well, I'm going to go with the, the nipple one. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. I yeah, can't I look at a girl with like little nubs. No. It's just not... <laughs> <laughs> Could you... <laughs> <laughs> it's just not all the four fingerless women that are watching this like, i know oh, they're, oh, all, they're all they're all they're all mad <laughs> so we're all going finger size nipples yeah That's hey i gotta bring up i gotta bring up an old argument because i i think me and luke never agreed on it so i need to know what you guys think okay would you rather eat chocolate flavored shit or shit flavored chocolate Chocolate no, flavored shit. No. no. Shit flavored chocolate for sure. No. Shit flavored chocolate for sure. Yeah. No. Melissa, I can you, Melissa, flavored. you would eat shit? I could do. But I wouldn't know it was shit. We just no, like you're, you're, no, you're no, no, you know it's shit. Someone's like, this is shit. But, but it, it tastes, tastes like good. chocolate, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is shit that tastes good, or this is chocolate that tastes terrible. But Which, like, I can't answer because I don't actually know what shit tastes like. Well, the smell. Think of the smell of a fucking big nasty poop. Okay, well, does the shit smell like shit or smell like chocolate? Yeah, that's a good question. The sh- well, no, it probably smells like chocolate. Yeah. yeah. I'm probably going to eat the shit, man. You're going to eat the shit. Yeah. If it smells and tastes like chocolate, I'm going in. But you know it came out of someone's ass. I'm going to pretend like I don't know that. <laughs> This is I'm I'm quite conflicted on this one. Now. I'm not conflicted at all. I don't want to eat shit. I don't care how fucking good it tastes. I know you. Yeah. She's if, like, if it tastes right. like fucking chocolate, if it's somebody good. if somebody told me, hey, Nick's shit tastes like chocolate, you want some? I wouldn't be like, oh yeah, okay. Like I'm not. I don't want to eat somebody no, else's shit. Not, we don't want to eat either of these. We also don't want to eat chocolate or shit that tastes or chocolate that tastes like shit. <laughs> but if I had to, 
I would. I don't want to eat shit. Yeah, I I agree with you there. It's it's a tough one for sure. Yeah, because I would taste like chocolate, man. Because like, look, let's say there was put a it on an ice cream sundae and call no, it. No, but night. but like, let's say there's a square of each, right? Yeah, I would endure the nastiness of the shit. I just eat it and swallow it, but I, at least I know it's chocolate. I would endure it. No, I would endure the chocolate flavored shit. You would eat shit for real, eh? Who shit is it? Is it your own shit? <laughs> Who shit is it? Does yeah, is this like a solid Does that matter? Shit? Is this diarrhea <laughs> shit? Depends. If it's like the shit of like a really gross person, it makes the shit grosser, you know? Really? So it's like a For hot sure. it's like a hot girl shit. You would eat it? Uh, if it tastes like chocolate, I'd be much more inclined than to eat <laughs> the shit that tastes like chocolate of someone that's really gross that I find att- unattractive to begin with, yeah. Why does it matter? It's still shit. And yeah, it tastes like, like chocolate. I also don't want to like lick the ass of a disgusting person where I would lick the ass of my wife that I find hot. So it's like, what? You know what I mean? That's different. It's not? But it tastes like chocolate. Eating ass is, se- eating ass is sexual. Eating shit is not. I know. Eating but it's, ass. It's still, it's still making the premise of where it's coming from more gross. All right, I'll give you that, but I don't. I, it does it's still. Do this. When you're at the gym and an equipment, a piece of equipment's being used, if there's a fucking ten out of ten girl using it and sweating all over the equipment, you don't give a fuck if she wipes it down. Where some sweaty. Fuck f- no! I'm like this sweat off that pad, boy. Thank you. Where some sweaty, fat, hairy guy is using it and doesn't. Wipe it down. No way! You don't want to like, fucking get off. <laughs> Clean your fucking shit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Where it comes from matters, Fuad. Okay, fine. So Melissa takes a shit and it tastes yeah. like chocolate. I'd eat it, no problem. Really? Yeah. I love my wife, but I'm not eating shit. Well, it's chocolate flavored shit, though. It says, it's still shit. It's chocolate flavored food. But it's still shit. It's still but shit. It's, but it doesn't taste like it. Yo, but, like, you, but you I'm know not- it's shit. I would just mix it in an ice cream sandwich and call it a day. It's like if your dog took a shit, would you? I'm not eating my dog shit. But if it tasted like chocolate? If it tastes like chocolate. Well, yeah, he poops solid, so whatever. I'll take a bite. Oh, so yeah. if it's runny, you wouldn't do it? Nah, that's weird. I, I don't want a chocolate milkshake. No, that's gross. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> How can that matter? It's, it's like, it. okay, all right. So you guys are all on the chocolate, eat chocolate, the chocolate flavored shit train. I'm wait, told, wait. I think I've been swayed to that side, yes. Yeah. I'm chocolate, man. I'm shocked at Ian and Melissa. I'm not shocked at Nick. What does that mean? <laughs> well, okay, I just don't think you care. I, nah, I you think, though, like the what you the flavor of what you have to eat is really going to make it. Really yeah, the smell of like of even though it's chocolate, when it smells like fucking hot dookie, is going to be gross. <laughs> <laughs> I would throw up probably eating that versus eating the shit that tastes like chocolate. Yeah. Yeah, but would you also throw up at the concept knowing that it's shit you're eating? That's just your mind. I just wouldn't think about it. Yeah. But you could give it a good whiff and it smell like chocolate. Like, oh, yeah, this is good, you know? And just... Yeah, you could give it. Yeah. Just shove it in. Call it a day. Yeah. I don't know. You got it. Are we persuading you yet, Fuad? I'm thinking more about it, but I just have, I'm just having trouble crossing the line to actually eating shit. Yeah, that's a tough I one. Can't, I can't do it. What if you were blindfolded if you didn't know it was shit? But that's different. But then you're you're gonna it's gonna smell yeah. like chocolate. But then you ate this shit, and then you were like, mm, "This is good." Yeah. And but- then your wife is like, <laughs> your wife goes, "Who had you just ate fucking shit?" It's not gonna matter. You enjoyed it. You yeah, but if I have a choice, chocolate but if- shit. <laughs> okay, you're right. My senses can't tell the difference, but my brain can tell the difference. So if you tell me it's shit, I'm not gonna want to eat it. Yeah. Right. Like my my nose and what? eyes can't tell the difference. My taste buds can't tell the difference, but my brain is like, you're eating shit. I'm going to embrace that chocolate shit. All right. All right. <clears throat> if the crew had to all be cast in a movie, which movie would it be? The Expendables. Expendables. I, think everyone, <laughs> I think everyone wrote The Expendables in the comments, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even see the comments. Oh, yeah, there's <laughs> one guy that wrote it, yeah. Um, is there a phrase or something that you remind yourself... You remind yourself with each time when facing times of adversity or hardship. No. No. No? For real? Like what? Like a mantra? Is there something that you think or say to yourself when you're having a shit day or a shit time and you need to get over? Do you have a do you have a mantra, Fuad? 
Yeah, well, kind of. Sometimes if I, if I see somebody else doing something that's like something I want to be doing and I'm not there and I start to, you know, sometimes you'll see somebody doing something and you might get depressed that you're not doing good enough yet or you're not there yet. Yeah, yeah. You ever been there? So I always remember, remind myself to walk my own path. Kind of like stay in your own lane, right? Like that shit. Sometimes when I get caught up seeing like what other businesses are doing or how well other businesses are doing, it gets like depressing. I'm like, oh, why aren't we there yet? Why aren't we doing this? Why aren't we doing that? And then I have to remember to just stay in my own lane and just do the best I can do with my own shit. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, I say that to myself sometimes because if I get too caught up, it gets fuck. It gets overwhelming. Yeah, it does. So. So still nothing. You guys don't have anything where you kind of reset. No. No. Okay. Fuad, we got a present for you. I'm gonna I'm gonna mail you this. Melissa just gave it to me. It says, "You are your own path." There you go. You got one too. <laughs> See, perfect. <laughs> send it to me. Sign it and send it over. You have this shit hanging on your wall, and you're fucking telling me I don't. You don't. I didn't say- even know we had that. She just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in that house has, has sayings. So you it's, think I do decorating around here, man? Uh, I'm just saying, Melissa has, Melissa's thinking the way I'm thinking. That's all I'm saying. Um, really, you guys don't have anything that resets you, regrounds you, or like when you're having a, you guys don't have shit days where you're like, I got to get through this. Yeah, but I just get through it. I don't like how yeah, I just... mantra I say in my head, you know. Well, it's not. I don't sit there and chant the fucking shit. I'm just saying, just, like, just I just life, you know. Yeah. See, when you're. Yeah. Nothing. I just let it pass. I don't That's know. That's not true. I jerk off. Tomorrow will be a better day. <laughs> that, that works too, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> that also works. Sometimes you just need to jerk off. You'll feel better. It's usually uh, my Yeah. It does help. Even like when you're... Without, you, me, without can, even joking, like it does help. Of course. But can you, but can, if you're really like bummed out, can you jerk off though? Yeah. Yeah. Are you I'm like, yeah, fuck it. I'm gonna go jerk off. Did you hear what said? No. She's like, that's so fucking depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I can just picture Ian sitting there crying. Like, <laughs> oh, my life sucks while you're fucking rubbing one out. Yeah. Seriously, you guys fucking that's okay. Am I the only normal one on this fucking show? Yeah. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah, I'm far from normal. Um if you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Is this any meal? Any meal. Okay, wait. Caveat to this. Do I get the health consequences of it, of it or is it just like... Is no, dessert it's like, included? It's, no, it's, it's not magic. Whatever whatever comes with it, you uh-huh. get. Oh, fuck, man. Because I'd I'd say like fucking McDonald's, but like then I'd be fat and die. You know? I would never say Not McDonald's. necessarily. If you only ate McDonald's once a day, you'd still be under your caloric deficit. Oh, yeah, but you'd feel so bad, man. Imagine how bad you'd feel only eating that. <laughs> I know. I would eat pasta with meat sauce. <clears throat> you gave that answer, so you're consistent. We've had answered this before. Have you we? That yeah. Answer. That's my go-to all the time, for sure. I'd probably eat, like, salmon and rice. I like that. I was going to eat. Yeah, but salmon. Good salmon in the rice. You can get that oil <laughs> mixed in there. That's good. Of all things. You know what's funny, Nick? He said but this. I'm healthy. I'd enjoy it. This is good. This is a win-win. He said that on a different podcast and Ben agreed with him. And then I think, and I think actually James also agreed with him. No, James said toast. That was his cheat. I think James said steak was his, was his like. Okay. Cause I would probably say, do steak, rice, and whole eggs. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Steak and eggs I could do forever too. Like a breakfast, like steak I and really eggs. I really like steak, toast. surprisingly. So. You don't like ketchup? steak? Yeah. No. How can you not like steak? Really? It's just like whatever, you know? Don't you don't know. like, but wait a minute. Is it, do you mean like when you make it at home or what if you go to a restaurant? I would very, very rarely would order a steak at a restaurant. Really? Like maybe if I was at a yeah. restaurant that was like known for having like fucking the fanciest, nicest, best steak ever, I might be like, okay, I'm here. Let's try it. But I generally won't order steak. What's your go to at a restaurant? Would you get fish? No, I never. <laughs> I don't think I never really ordered fish much. No. Nick's so um, angry. <laughs> I would, probably order, I would probably order, honestly, pasta, like you said, you know? What kind? What kind? Uh, nothing with a cream sauce, that's for sure. Really? See, I like Alfredo. 
Alfredo's good. I like both. I like I a blush. I actually like blush sauce the best. Yeah. 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 I like the in between. But uh, no, I order steak when I go out because I can never cook a steak at home as well as I can do it at a restaurant. Well, see, I know how to cook steak real good, though. Yeah, I can do it on, you know, on a barbecue. It's not bad, but it's never like, because when you go to a restaurant, like a good restaurant, like a steakhouse. No, I get out the cast iron skillet, do it, sear it, put it in the oven. I get serious. Oh, okay. Yeah, but still, I, I don't, I never, I don't, go to the, steak, right? I don't go to the trouble of marinating it for fucking 12 hours and shit the way they do at a restaurant. So it's like. I, I usually always get a burger. Yeah, that's pretty consistent. I would go there too. Depends on the restaurant. Please. Depends if Please I go to. Potato fries. Yeah, if I go to a nicer restaurant, I'm probably grabbing a steak. If I go to you like a, farm, you have farm boy where you live, Fouad? No, huh. no. Why is it a burger place? No, no, it's a it's a grocery store chain. Oh no, well no no no. Like uh, Whole Foods, it's kind of like Whole Foods. No, I've seen one in uh, Burlington, but no, we don't have one here in Windsor. Guess what they're building in Jersey? Hmm. What? A uh, Tim Hortons. Oh yeah, yeah. We're spreading. We're taking over, man. Yeah. I'm kind of jealous because not one in Florida. You're not, you're not missing much. You're not, right Starbucks is better, dude. Look, yeah. like we, really? have Tim, we have Tim Hortons everywhere. I got Starbucks. Yeah, yeah you always get Starbucks. Yeah, it's better, no one, dude. No one, no one really drinks, like, oh, unless you're like a 55-year-old hockey dad, you don't really drink coffee from Starbucks. Really? Or from Tim Hortons up here. Yeah. I think people here are used to Tim Hortons. They go there because it's like half the price of Starbucks. And because it was oh. like, it's like the OG. It was there and yeah. it was here in large volumes before Starbucks. So a lot of people got like the taste of that and like it and stayed with it. And they don't like the idea of paying another $2 for a smaller coffee. So they stuck there. But generally people I think enjoy Starbucks. More. But it's real coffee. Like, you know what I mean? You're paying more, but like I actually taste like I'm drinking coffee versus like. It's considerably better. Tim, yeah. Hortons is, Tim, Hortons, well, Tim Hortons doesn't taste like coffee. It's watered down. It tastes watered down to me. Really? I would get, I would get McDonald's coffee over uh, Tim Hortons coffee any day of the week. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I think the other thing with Starbucks is people are on, this is going to sound stupid to you guys, I think, but I think people are intimidated by it. I can see that. Because it's like, you got to order like order a venti a or, yeah, yeah. A venti or a grande. And there's like a million different names. And like, what, what do you put in it? You put in fucking yeah. skim whole calf fucking cashew yeah. milk. Like, yeah. You know? When you go to, Tim Hortons, good. when you go to Tim Hortons, it's like, I'll have a medium coffee. And they yeah. give you, you know, oh, what it's, I mean? like it's simple. Yeah. What, yeah. Nick, are you like a nitro or brew or cold brew guy? What do you get? Have you seen? I usually get a venti cold brew venti cold with, with 15 Splendas or something like that, or 15. <laughs> sh- well, 15 normally shots. they're actually getting rid of it, and I think I'm the cause of it because everybody was getting my drink. Oh, but what I used it? to get a venti cold brew with five pumps of sugar-free cinnamon dolce, <laughs> five pumps of sugar-free vanilla, and I would get like three stevias. <laughs> but I went, I went to. Uh, when I went there like last week, I went to go order it and they were like, we don't have any more sugar-free syrup. And I'm like, oh, what are you just out for the day? And they're like, no, we're like doing away with it. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? Yeah, you ruined it for them. That's why. why. I think, and I think because everybody was ordering that shit and getting a bunch of yeah. free pumps. You're going to have to order those online, keep them in your car. Yeah. I know. Um, do you stand or sit to wipe? I, I think we've done this before. Yeah. And doesn't it? I, wasn't that, I, I think I was shocked. Yeah, I was shocked at the answer. You were you were a sitter. We're standers. Yeah. You sit. What do you mean you sit? How do you reach? You sit. Thank I, you. I, what do you mean how? I just lean over. You've clearly never been big enough. Obviously, you're so <laughs> small compared to Nick and I. You don't understand this anymore. I gotta stand. I've never stood, even at my biggest. I do you stood. like go under or? Fuck you, no know, man. I don't wipe under. <laughs> I don't wipe from the front. <laughs> well, I don't know how. I, I don't know how sitters wipe. Dude, you just fucking lean. It's you like just I, just, I just lean over. Nah, that doesn't feel right. I gotta get up. Yeah, I stand right nah, up. Oh man, because look, okay, I don't want to go over this again, okay? But when you lean, your ass stays spread apart. No, it's so it's a I can't even get in there trying to do that. Listen, if you lean over, your ass actually spreads further. So shit stays clean. No pun intended. But if you stay <laughs> if you stand, your butt cheeks come together and now you've made more of a mess. No. Oh my god. I can't I can't get in there properly when I'm sitting. Just like the ergonomics of it are all wrong. Yeah, look at Nick. Nah, this is not I'm not right. persuaded. I'm a stander. Yeah. Just try it, Nick. I'll try it on my next shit. <laughs> no, I mean, while you're sitting there, just try it. Just lean. It's hard. It's not that I hard. Can't do it. My hand doesn't like get yeah. in there. I'm barely in the the first cheek. <laughs> 
Do you have like fucking gorilla arms? Like how are you getting in there? My oh. arms are my arms are longer than normal, but yeah, yeah I have short little T-Rex arms. <laughs> like, Melissa, you sit obviously, right? Yeah. Yeah, see, I know girls sit, but that's because she's a girl, you know? No, yeah, mo- no, no, no. No, civilized people sit. No. It's like the fork and it's like the chicken and rice thing. Civilized people use a fork. It's a fucking spoon. And by the way, if I'm at a restaurant with a female, I'm getting a fucking spoon. No, you're not. No, you're not. Swear to God. First date. First date. Swear to- yes. If I use a spoon and if this girl's going to dip on me because I asked for a fucking spoon, she get the fuck out the table. <laughs> it's a spoon. Come on, man. Seriously? You got a point there. So if you go to a steakhouse, do you cut up your steak in like little pieces and then get a spoon and shovel it all in? Uh, yes. No, you don't. Yes, I do. That's how I eat. I eat with a spoon. Food, right? So you go to a, a steakhouse, you order a big steak. Yeah. You cut it all into little pieces and yep. then you ask the waitress for a spoon. I usually, I always get a spoon. Man. I always have a spoon. Okay. I don't want to go back into this debate. Fine. Use a spoon. That's great. But if you stand to wipe your ass, that's fucked up. Well, clearly not because you're the minority. You're the only one that sits. Melissa sits down too. I got her she's on. A woman. The show. There's three of us. There's a fucking woman. woman. <laughs> Melissa said she sits down. It's two two. It's two two. <laughs> but I said she's a female. I know all girls sit down to wipe their ass because girls pee and they sit wiping down. So it's only natural they're gonna stay sitting down to wipe their butt. Like it's not like you sit down for like a pee and a poo. You're gonna wipe your vagina and then stand up and wipe your butt. You're just gonna do like doop doop. You know, I get that. No, that doesn't make any sense. It makes clear sense. Why does it have anything to do with it? If you guess what, I pee standing, so I wipe standing. Thank you. And they pee. Sitting, Those two they... things are not connected. This is the worst argument ever. Clearly, like, it is. It's connected. very connected. Look at the connection here. She pees sitting, so she stands and wipes sitting. We pee standing, so we wipe standing. It's. <laughs> The shit doesn't come out of your dick. What does the pissing have to do with it? No, it's because pissing. I stand. Yeah, you're standing. You got to get up. I don't sit and pee. <laughs> oh my god! Thank you. <laughs> this can't. This can't be happening to me. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to do another poll now and find out. Can so? Can Which you one? call? Can, can you call somebody? Can you call? Call Chris. Call Chris. Call Chris. What if he if he shits standing? <laughs> no, nobody shits. Standing? Nobody shits standing. <laughs> Please tell me nobody's <laughs> shitting standing. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, wait. Let's see if you can answer that. <clears throat> Yo. Yo. We got a question for you. <laughs> well, we're on the po- It's me, Nick, and Fuad. What's up? Um, do you wipe your ass sitting or standing? You already asked me this. I feel like it's in between. My stand off the toilet. I'm not sitting on it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh, he said he's standing. Okay, thank you. He said he's standing. He did not. He said he's like. He said he was in between. Yeah. So he's not sitting down though. He's getting off I'm both. Not, I'm not touching the seat anymore. Both his butt cheeks are off the seat. Yes. That's a stand. That's a stand. So he's so he's crouching. No, he's standing. That's a stand. That's a stand. That counts as a stand in all our books. That counts as a stand. If butt cheek is not on the seat, it's a stand. How yeah. is that possible? What do you mean? You stand you up mean? and wipe. It sounds so uncomfortable. You're, you sound uncomfortable. <laughs> he, said, he said, how is it possible to sit? It's not. You can't you Because you lean over, man. What do you mean lean over? You how lean do, over. Like you, you lean a bit. Like an Olympic gymnast? How flexible is <laughs> it? All right, I'll let you go. Kiss you. <laughs> this is not good. Wait, wait. This the debate could go forever. Well, are you calling? Me. Who are you calling? <laughs> if we're making phone calls, hold on. <laughs> Paul, what are you doing? What? Paul, what are you doing? Uh, I just want to go. Um, gotta bring my. You're on the podcast. Stuff. You're on the podcast. You're on the. You're on the <laughs> He's getting ready to have a full blown comp. You're on the podcast. I need to ask you a question. Okay, I'm live. You're live. Okay. What do you want to know? When you take a shit and you when you wipe your ass, do you wipe sitting or standing? Oh, standing. I can't sit. No way. <laughs> Thank do you. You, <laughs> you doofus. Because <laughs> you lean you lean over a little bit. No. 
Don't try and convince him. Paul, <laughs> Paul you're Paul, right. Hang up the phone, Paul. He can't hear us. Who has got it on headphones? He can't hear us. Which doesn't work for me. Okay. So I have to kind of like, you know, move around. Yeah. Wait, explain that again. What do you? How do you do that? I, on, at our house, uh, the, the rolls on the left hand side on the wall. I, I, I can't do that left. Oh so Jesus I Christ! To, like stand and move my body. So yeah. that's on my right hand side. So wait a minute. So you have to get up and turn your whole body around and to get, yeah. get the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of fucking bathroom do you got? Yeah, I've, done, I've done this. <laughs> okay, I'll call you later. Okay. Bye. Okay. <laughs> so he's got to stand up in a crouching position and turn his whole body around. Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, I guess I'm the fucking minority. I don't give a fuck. I'm still not going to stand and wipe my ass. You're not, you're not the minority. You're the minority for men. All women wipe their butt sitting down. You're just a woman. <laughs> <laughs> you just have a nice tinkle sitting down. And well, you, you know what? Women are butt. women are cleaner, so it's fine. I'll just be I'll be part of their fucking group. That's good. Yeah. Cool. They're the cleaner. Well, they're the cleaner of the two species. Dude, my ass is always clean. It can't be if you're standing up to wipe your ass. What? I wipe it, I baby wipe it, I rewipe it again. I'm good. My ass is always clean. All right, let's move on. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done talking about this. We're gonna, we're gonna have to do another poll now to find out. Who who uh wipes standing or sitting? One sec, Ian's got us on mute. Oh, I was just talking most oh, on mute. Okay. Um let's see. Did you gain the most muscle from your very first cycle? or a cycle that was later in your career? Uh, I think I gained the most water, maybe. <laughs> I gained the most weight in my first Yeah, cycle. I gained the but it was like water. I wouldn't say- Yeah, I don't know how much of it was like- I gained the most weight, but I think from a muscularity and like look standpoint, it definitely wasn't the most progress I've made in the cycle. <laughs> I, think I, I think I gained the most muscle when I learned how to eat. And that must've yeah. been, I think that was probably four or five years into my career when I finally learned like, how much high, like how much good food I, I needed to eat and in what amount. Yeah. The most yeah. I knew was the first, when I took 2017 off, when I didn't compete at all since 2017, working with Jansen, I took that whole year off between 2016 and 2018 season. I came back like 25 pounds stage weight heavier. You know what? That's yeah. I think I had two, two years. There was two years for me because there was one year where I finally learned to eat like clean food in really high amounts. And I noticed I put on a lot of good, good size that year. We will. Uh, yeah. And the next year was uh, Hani made me take 2010 off. And that year I took off between 20, the 2010 and, and 2011 shows. I made a huge difference. There's a huge difference in my physique. Yeah. Yeah. So, so no, it doesn't, I don't, I don't think it has to do with being your first cycle. I think people get confused with the, with the weight. Because you put on yeah, the most, you put on the most weight your first cycle usually. Yeah, I put on like twenty five pounds in a month. The biggest change in water and glycogen, nitrogen retention, all these things that will then get up and kind of stay up, so you won't have that same leap every time. You know. Yeah. Uh, should you be able to win your pro card in one division and cross over once you're a pro? Sure. Mm. I don't think so. I disagree only for the fact that I don't, I generally don't think it, it gives you zero advantage whatsoever, ever. I was going to say, I don't care because you're still going to be at the back of the pack if you switch exactly. from like classic to open. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, a lot of guys are trying to get their pro card in, in open bodybuilding. And for a classic guy to just switch over, it's kind of like a little bit, it's kind of cheating. Well, it's cheating, but like, but then they go into a men's open show and they come last. So who cares? No, 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 no. I know. But let's say, let's say I'm, I don't want to be classic. I want to be a bodybuilder. <clears throat> and from the beginning of my competitive career, I've been doing all open bodybuilding classes the whole way through. And it's, it, and I'm seven years in and I haven't got my pro card yet. And this other kid just got his pro card in classic somewhere after like two years. And he just said, like, Oh, I'm going to switch to open now. Mm -hmm. Yes. He'll get killed, but he just took my, like, my place right like you know what i mean he kind of like cheated the no, system, I get it. cheated the system a little bit yeah so i agree with you that it won't change how good he's gonna be i get i get what you're saying but also there's more to like 
like a lot of good bodybuilders won't make good classic guys. So it's not necessarily like an argument that helps, you know? What do you mean? Say that. What like do you you're mean? saying if a guy turns classic a, a pro in classic and then moves to open, I don't think that necessarily turning pro in classic is easier than in men's bodybuilding. I think it is. I think it, I think it can take less time, but I think then there's also a genetic role in it that is not necessarily the same as bodybuilding. I think it's, I think, um, classic. A lot, a lot of real shitty guys turn pro in bodybuilding. Well, yeah. But a lot of guys that don't really, won't really ever reach the upper echelon of classic turn pro and classic. They're really yeah. just, they're really they just bodybuilders. Bodybuild. They're really just bodybuilders that haven't made the weight or that aren't big enough that they, that, you know, they're under that weight cap though. I agree. But like in the flip side of that, a lot of these guys that are competing in, the, in the classic or in the open like going to classic it's not their physique might it's not necessarily an added benefit for them unless they have that shape you know you know what i would say to correct the whole problem i would say that if you did turn pro in a different class you would have to reach a certain level in the pros before you could switch like qualify for an olympia before you can switch or something yeah like if you've qualified for the o that means you're good enough to you know you've achieved a certain level you can switch classes right but like if you just like, let's say I'm 22 and I turn pro and classic, but there's no way I would ever stood a chance of turning pro well, and open. Chris did it the other way. He turned pro and open and then switched to classic. But there also wasn't classic when he was trying to turn pro. It came in the same year he turned pro. I might even say it's only based on switching to open because open takes the most time to do. How do you feel if people outgrow the class? See, look, I only care. That's true too, what Nick's saying. I only care if you're getting some kind of unfair advantage. And I think comp having the opportunity to necessarily compete in a show gives you zero advantage. I think it's the level of competitiveness. So if you're someone that turns pro in classic or men's physique and then decide to do an open show, I mean, Stan DeLongo, prime example, he turned pro in classic. He was competing in classic. He went to the open. He wasn't more competitive. He didn't take spots from anyone else necessarily. And if he did, well, then those guys that turn pro in men's open and just got beat by a classic guy, well, fucking jokes on you, you know? Yeah, yeah, but you're but you're going back to the same argument, which is you can turn pro if you want to. You're still not going to place well unless you belong, which I already agree with. But I feel like let's say you planned it that way from the beginning. You're like, you know what? I'm going to have trouble turning pro in the open. I'm going to try and get my pro card in classic and then switch. And I'm like, I don't know. I just feel like it's kind of fucked up. You should have to turn pro in the class that you want to compete in. Or if you turn pro at a different class, you should have to reach a certain level of you know where you belong as a pro before you can switch to a different class i see what you're saying but i i, I personally disagree i don't think it matters because i think that all that matters is the competitiveness and i don't really i could care less who's competing and what you know i would i would never fight you on it either because i don't care either like i don't really give a shit i'm just saying like for the sake of argument i don't yeah. really care like if people if someone turns pro in men's physique and then wants to do open bodybuilding good luck you're, yeah, you're, vice versa if i go yeah. enter a men's physique show i'm gonna come dead last you know it's yeah. like yeah yeah, you know. yeah. Um, why do some, so many people think classic physique is like junior bodybuilding? I have friends telling me to drop to classic just to get my pro card. It's funny because we were literally just I know, as if it's an easy, literally. yeah, well, because it's, it's easier to gain that size. So people think less size, it means it's an easier class. Generally, which, to, be, to be the size of a men's open top competitive pro, you're talking seven to 10 years of serious training. In you, classic physique, you can gain that muscle with two to three years of hard training. Yeah. So I think yeah. you're talking about cutting the time frame down by half, which is, is significant. So, you know, I think for guys that are trying to make a career and they want to have IPV pro in their status and they want to compete in pro shows, and they want to get sponsors, you know, for them to be expediting the process and getting a pro card and getting in these shows and being competitive sooner than later is generally a more attractive idea to them. Mm. What are you eating, Nick? Um, ground turkey. Sushi rice, um, asparagus, and some macadamia nut oil. Sushi rice is the shit. And that's, I love sushi and that's why I eat with a fork, because it's sushi rice. Yeah, but with su I'm just saying you can eat. People are always like, the rice is falling off your fork. And I'm like, no, you, you could eat sushi rice. Or, yeah, yeah, you could eat sushi rice. eating with ground turkey, too. So, like, you, you got to get a spoon there. Yeah, I would go with a spoon. With, gro with any ground meat, I would do a spoon. I usually eat majority of all ground meat. Like, I don't really eat much, like, chicken or steak. Honestly, I haven't eaten a chicken breast in two months now. 
What yeah. do you just, you get your actual chicken breast ground up, or you just buy yeah, ground chicken? Getting, like actually in ground chicken or ground turkey, yeah. Yeah, but you mm-hmm. just buy it like that. Or are you buying actual chicken breast and having it ground up? No, no, I'm buying it ground, yeah. But you know, it's not the same, right? Oh, not necessarily. I know that, yeah. Yeah, but don't you worry about that? No. You don't care. <laughs> no, because I'm no. progressing very well, so I'm not worrying about that. Like I'm getting the leanest turkey and chicken I can. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. The protein content still there. Like my my turkey is 99. Yeah, and when yeah. I and when I'm getting ground beef, I'm getting I'm like I've been go I want to go like a. To, farm boy and they have a what was it called again the ground sirloin so like yeah 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 okay Uh, who's the most likely out of the podcast to film a porno and what type well come on man to film it to film it yeah why ben oh i I thought i think then do it you think ben (laughs) I, i would pick ben to do the porno you think Ben would do the porno out of everybody? Yeah, I feel ben like Ben, ben, ben looks it. most porno-ish. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the tattoos, it's like, just like anytime these questions come up about someone that would do something a little odd, it's always Ben, just because he's like kind of the the quieter he's guy. Exotic. Like, he's exotic. Yeah, he's a little more mysterious. He's got that kind of look to him that's a little edgy. So it's like, man, I could see Ben getting into some weird shit, you know? For sure. <laughs> All right. Um, how hard is it for you guys to find briefs, shorts, and pants that fit? My quads aren't even that big, and I have issues finding stuff that fits, so I can't imagine if I was 300 pounds. Stretchy jeans. Is, uh, is hard? I haven't had a hard time finding pants in forever. But like, I, I, I used to, honestly, man, I used to have a nightmare of a time finding pants, but nowadays the, the style is like stretchier, stretchy well, I, jeans. I wear jeans like once a year, so I don't even know. <laughs> well, I think he means if you're wearing pants, right? So D- Diesel has a Diesel has like a stretchy version of their jeans that are fucking pretty awesome. What are the ones I have that are the stretchy ones? Who's Diesel? Diesel. You never seen Diesel clothing? No. It's pretty sweet. I I have some Levi's like 5'11 stretchy ones that are really nice. Athletic Athletic fit that I have like two or three pairs and I've had those for a couple years and they're great. That's the only ones I have if I need jeans. Well, this isn't really a great representation, but this is Diesel's page. Whoa. Yeah, it's a it's a fashion line. It's a clothing line, but I mean, I like the jeans. They fit. Well. I only own one pair of jeans. Nick, you've seen like diesel watches and shit. They got the big ass fucking watches and like. Yeah, uh, I used to have one of those. I love that. I lost that. Oh, one. okay. But like overly big face watches, yeah. you know. Anyway, this is but yeah. So diesel they jeans. jeans. Yeah, they have stretchy jeans that are actually really comfortable. Um, and then Lululemon for fucking briefs, man. I like Lululemon. Lululemon briefs are the most, honestly, the most comfortable fucking briefs ever worn in my life. Melissa used to work at Lulu, so I have fucking tons of them, and I'm just riding that train to the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> I got a pair, a couple pairs that should probably be thrown out, but I don't get them for as cheap as I used to, so I don't want to care. <laughs> They're expensive, man. It's like... I go commando, so I don't worry about it. Thank you. Um, you go commando all the time? Yeah. Did we talk about this before? I think we did. But yeah, I go commando. In the gym? Yeah. That's disgusting. Interesting. Why is that disgusting? Because, I don't know, there's nothing between your balls and the fucking pants you're wearing. Do you, do you sleep naked all the time, too? Yeah. I sleep naked, too. That's not a big deal, but... I can't I can't sleep naked, man. I don't know why. Why? I hate it. I hate the feeling. Why? I just I love it. it. I don't like being, like, lick, flopping around. I like to be like... <laughs> <laughs> See your fucking dick that big? It's just flopping around. It's no, like, like, I don't know. I'd like say like it's hot, so I'm like, you know, pulling a leg out. It's like my dick's hanging out. Like I, you know? <laughs> I like it because I'm like it's easy access in case something happens in the middle of the night. I, I feel like I feel like exposed to danger. You know. <laughs> well, actually, it's funny I you said that. No, no, no. It's funny you said that because the one thing I think about is like, if somebody breaks into my house, I'm 100%. like, I'm like, I got to put my boxers on before I go out there. Yeah. And that's time I could be using. I was having this argument with Mark like two weeks ago because he sleeps naked. And I was like, what are you going to do if someone breaks your house? Like, you're going to ride out there naked? He's like, yeah, I'm going to fuck. I'm like, bro, fuck that. You got to be ready for ready for battle, you know? (laughs) Well, luckily, I live in a good neighborhood, so I can sleep naked. I'm I'm fine. I'm all right. (laughs) Um, How did we get on that? Oh, you're fucking you go to the gym commando. Yeah. Ian, don't you think that's weird? Did you say something? Is that am I the only one? It's weird to me, but I mean, I know lots of people do that kind of shit, so it's like whatever. Well, it's I know fun. a lot. I know a lot of girls do that shit, but that's 
Do you train commando pretty often, babe? Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't know. I think it's, it's, I don't know. It seems wrong to me. Why does it, why does it seem wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. So you're like, balls are sweating. There's nothing to catch the sweat and it's just seeping through your pants onto the gym seats. It's like, I don't know. It's like for our protection, not yours. You thinking really deep into that one. Well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just like, that's that's why I wear fucking boxers. I'm like, no. Nah. And plus, I, I don't. For all you know, 50% of your gym are commando and you're just sitting fucking the ball sweat. Straight, raw ball sweat all the time. I guarantee many people in your gym don't have underwear on. Yeah. I would be so uncomfortable, though. Especially so like. You, so if we were training together and I was, and you knew, you know, I don't have underwear, are you going to feel com- uncomfortable training with me? Yes. Why? I don't know. Well, get over it. I would get over. I would get over it. I would get over it, but I would still think it was weird. Huh? Man, it's funny, you know. You grow up and you think all these things that you're doing are normal, and you think everybody probably does the same things you do. And now I realize, like, everybody's fucked up. Everyone's weird, man. Yeah. Are you saying like I'm fucked up and you're normal, or we're all fucked up? We're I thought up. I thought everything I did was normal, and I still do. So I think you're fucked up. <laughs> like you guys stand to wipe your ass. This guy trains with no underwear on. You eat. Well, it seems that everyone except for you stands. You eat chunks with the chunks of meat with a spoon instead of a fork. Whatever, man. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um. What makeshift weapon would each of you guys on the podcast use in a prison fight? A makeshift weapon? I'd sharpen a toothbrush. Sorry, what, what's, what do we have it at our disposal? Well, you're in prison, so what do you have in prison? <laughs> what's it, we're in prison, what do we make as a weapon? Yeah. Oh, I'm putting the soaps in the pillowcase. <laughs> that's that's in your, in your sock. <laughs> your sock. Yeah, so, so, so far as the soap in the sock in the pillowcase, you fucking, that fucks him, that hurts, man. I'm taking, I'm sharpening a toothbrush. Yeah, a little shiv. That's good. Yeah, we can stab you in your neck. Yeah, well, not you, but like whoever. I, I'm more of a, bl- a blunt trauma kind of guy. Well, you know? plus you get the distance with the sock. You can kind yeah. of from far away. You can. That's good. It's good you for like that the, shit. It's good for the prison riots because you can just fucking start <laughs> swinging that left, right, and center. You know. <laughs> Have you ever been to jail, either of you? No. No. Not even for a night. No. No. Oh. Have you? One night. One What'd night, uh, got in a fight, and then the cop didn't press charges on the fight, but I was super fucking drunk, so he's like, you're spending the night in jail. Uh, yeah. It was the worst. I don't know how people, like, you know, I talked to Nathan. Nathan's like, yeah, three months, no problem. I spent one night in fucking jail. I was like, this is, I never, ever, ever. Wait, wanted- <laughs> Dude, because I was, at the time, it was like my, I was my biggest and they put me in cuffs and I'm sitting in like this, the drunk tank cell, not the main cell. And I'm sitting like this with my hands behind my back in cuffs. And it was the most excruciatingly painful fucking thing. And I sat there screaming for like three hours. I'm like just screaming for somebody to come get me out of the cuffs. Yeah. I think they literally let me scream myself like a baby. Like they just let me scream <laughs> until I stopped screaming. And then I when I was screaming like that all the time. So like, yeah. When I finally calmed, and they took my shoelaces and everything. It was fucking weird. So finally, when they when I calmed down, they came back and took me out of the cuffs, and they let me sit there for another hour or something like that. And then they threw me in the normal cell, and they gave me a burger. So I was like, oh, that's all right. They gave me a burger. <laughs> so, so they gave me, I had a burger, and then my apartment that I lived in at the time was actually right across from the police station. So like at like six or seven in the morning. You just walked across the street. They let me go, and I just walked over, walked home. And I was like, okay, well, I guess it wasn't that bad. But, yeah, it fucking, <laughs> it fucking sucked at the time, man. I was like, I don't know how people do that shit. Like, they talk about it like it's no big deal. I'm like, yeah, not for me, man. Um, Why isn't – oh, this is actually a good question. I saw this somewhere. Why isn't Rami promoting bodybuilding the way Jay or Ronnie did? Mr. Olympia should be traveling the world promoting the sport. I feel like I saw that too. I feel like this is a weird thing that like people are putting on Mr. Olympia now. Like it's their job to like elevate bodybuilding. And I'm like, Mm. if you if you think about it, Rami's got like how many followers in the Middle East? 
millions. Yeah. I mean, how much more could you help expand the reach of bodybuilding? Like there's even, even when I had Shabon on the podcast yesterday, bro, didn't you know he should be going to little elementary schools and talking seminars every day? Yeah. And broken. Yeah. I mean, I just, so Shabon was on the podcast and he was talking to me about how ever since Rami started bodybuilding people in Egypt are like more likely to start doing it as when Hassan started doing it, Shabon started doing it. And I'm like, that's what Mr. That's what being an ambassador is. It's like inspiring other people to do the, the thing you're doing. Yep. So he's inspired an entire region in the world to think that, Hey, I could do that too. And now all of a sudden you're seeing like a whole bunch of bodybuilders come out of the middle East. Oh. Isn't that what being an ambassador is like, what more do people yeah. want? I agree with you. But they just, they want, they want them to travel all over the world. Yeah. But there's COVID right now and shit. Like, how is he supposed to travel? Well, I, I know, but it's also I, like, you expect this guy to keep trying to be Mr. Olympia when he's traveling the whole goddamn year. Do you not realize how hard it is to be a good bodybuilder when you're yeah. fucking flying all over the damn planet? You know? Well, I think they think of Jay and Ronnie, right? Cause I don't think other Olympias really did it. Like Phil didn't travel that much from what I remember. Not, uh, he, he traveled, but not like, not like crazy. crazy. And Dorian Yates disappeared for a whole fucking year when he was Mr. Olympia. Dorian Yates never traveled. He, he would just he be gone. And went back. Yeah. So like other than Jay and Ronnie, that's it, really. Nobody else has really been like. And for the most part, they were usually traveling either because of sponsors or because of their own brands. That's true, too. Yeah. I think at that time, also, I think the thing people forget is at that time, there was no social media. Right. When companies are paying Jay, you know, I, I, I've heard numbers like five hundred to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars a year for muscle tech. When companies are paying somebody that much money they're going to make you travel. They're going to make you go to guest yeah, posing. You, you got to go. Yeah, you got to. And I don't know if I would say make, because he's probably getting paid from guest posing things too, but Jay's also a businessman. So Jay's like, you know, that was his prerogative to go try and earn that money. But there, it was the only way to connect with fans at that time because there was no social media. Mm -hmm. So after Phil, like by the time Phil had become Mr. Olympia, you had Instagram and you could connect with fans <laughs> online. So I don't know. I don't know if we're ever going to see a Mr. Olympia travel the world and like guest pose. Not guest posings aren't as popular as they used to be. No, no. Like Nick, not. Nick, if you had turned pro 15 years ago or 10 years ago, you would have been yeah. guest posed like a hundred times by now. For sure. Yeah. Being your size with your fucking freak factor and all that. Right. Pro, even since I've turned pro, like in 2014, the first couple of years I turned pro, I was guest posing like twice a year and it's gone from like twice a year to once a year to once every two years. And that's as I've got better and more impressive, I guess pose less because less people do it. Well, because things are really changing, man. It's like the, the sport evolves. Like back in the day, think about it in the 90s, like bodybuilders used to sign eight by tens and get paid for them. Like you'd go to an expo and every bodybuilder would have their eight by 10 and they'd sell it for 10 bucks. Um, and that's how it happened. And then all of a sudden iPhones came along. And so nobody wanted to buy your photo anymore. They would just take a photo with you. Yep. Yeah. So then photos went out the window and then companies started making photos that you would sign for free and give to people. Yeah. So photos went out the window, but guest posings were still cool. And then Facebook came along and Instagram and everyone's like, well, why would I go to guest posing? I talked to Nick yesterday online. I just saw, I just saw Nick fucking posing online. Why the fuck do I got to go pay for a ticket at this bodybuilding show? Cause the only reason guest posing wasn't, was so impressive was because you never got to see your favorite pros. Yeah. There was there was no way to see Kevin Lavroni. There was no way to see Dorian Yates. There was no way to see especially off season like big, yeah. Like so you would have to go pay fifty bucks or hundred bucks at some show and watch them on stage. And now right. you see every day. Yeah, now everyone's posting progress photos every day. So like as a promoter myself, when I have someone like guest pose, it doesn't do anything for ticket sales. <laughs> it's literally just something we do for the audience as like a added like feature, but it's not like entertainment. Yeah, it's not like it's gonna draw. And the thing is, too, with guest posing is like you're paying an athlete minimum three thousand dollars, upwards of five thousand dollars, depending on who it is. You're not going to get that back in ticket sales. No, no. So a lot of promoters, it might not be Rami's fault. People might not want to pay because Mr. Olympia is probably charging eight to ten thousand dollars a fee, at least. So a lot of promoters probably don't want to pay the eight to ten thousand dollars it costs to bring Rami in, plus the flight, plus the hotel, you know, plus first class flights, plus yeah, hotel. and then and. Yeah. Then, and, and no one's going to come watch because they just saw Rami pose online yesterday. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's a little bit harsh to be like, put this kind of pressure on a, on a, and then, and then also if he does do all the guest posing 
and he doesn't win the Olympia, no one's going to be like, oh, it's okay. He was guest posing. They're just going to shit on him. Exactly. They're not going to, they're not going to give him a, yeah, they're not going to give him a pass and be like, well, he guest posed a hundred times. So it's okay that he lost. No, they're going to be like, oh, he sucks. He lost. Yeah. They, they don't understand how much traveling takes a toll. No the body and everything. Pack up your meals, your you know, your drugs, you're fucking yeah. trying to find new gyms all the time. Like, I mean, this is a lot of fucking factors that are, are tough, especially at that level, you know. Well, not to mention Rami's got a family. Yeah. Well, that too. He's got yeah. family and kid and kids and shit. It's like, yeah, you know. Jay Jay traveled a lot, but Jay didn't have kids. No. And I think he brought his wife with him sometimes. So yeah, it's it's very different. Um Ooh, rate my, should we rate a physique? Sure. Yeah, I saw a lot of those. There's always a lot of those. I think we start. We got to start dedicating like a show just to that. Well, you did. I know I did for a while, but then people were complaining that they didn't like it. So I was like, okay. Yeah, because well. we, we we gave people the truth and they didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, should we do that again? I'm, I'll do it. I think it's fun. You'll do it. Okay. We'll we'll start. We'll bring it back up. Okay, let me see. I gotta. I think this is a girl. Actually, I didn't even realize that. Victoria. We've never really done a girl, right? Eh? No. She bikini. Um, she is gonna be your your favorite, Nick. Okay. Well, bring her up. Victoria Vivadanya. I don't know if I totally. She's wellness. That. Wellness is an amazing category. Ooh, look at those. Nick, what do you think? Fucking, she's got a 10. That's a serious <laughs> set of fucking legs. I don't need to see anything else. 10. The legs are crazy, man. Crazy, yeah. That's a fucking 10. Yeah. Where, is she, where is she from? Legs. From, from London. She's from the UK. London, baby. All right, let's see what we got here. Those are fucking Jesus legs, man. Christ. Those legs are thick. What the fuck? Yeah, her legs are whack. In a good way. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really thick legs. Good. She's got good muscle tone, too. Everything's like in shape, but not too shredded. Can we find some whatever show she was getting ready for? I bet she won. Can I we find she... whatever? Can we find what? Oh, yeah, the pro card win throwback. Yeah, pro, she won. Pro card win throwback. She did win. Just like actual yeah. like progress photos. Oh, there we go. She's got a crazy set of fucking glutes and hamstrings and quads. I, I don't even. Wow. First, first of all, I don't know how to properly judge wellness, but if I did, this would be a ten. Yeah, I, I don't know. The class is like the class is ten for me. Well, the, the girl that just won the show that you were guest posing at was good, eh? Right, Nick? Me? Yeah. Yeah, the blonde, really good. Yeah, I, I can't remember her name, but she was good. She looks kind of similar to this, not quite as muscular, but. Yeah, I don't, the reason I can't give a number is I don't know how muscular they want them to be. But this, to me, is what I thought the class was supposed to be. Like, thicker legs, thicker glutes, smaller upper body, but still good muscle tone. Is, is it just me, or is it because her legs are, are so jacked? That it's just, she have really short legs? No, she looks... I think like, they're a little... Sh- I don't know. No, she looks like she has a little bit longer torso. I do see that. Yeah. She looks right, yeah. Yeah, she does. So you, she's the, the first female we rank here, eh? Yeah, and I didn't think I didn't honestly I didn't pick her on purpose. Like I just ran I didn't even know it was a girl until we brought her up. Her fucking glutes are huge, man. Yeah, yeah. the muscularity in her legs is just ridiculous. Like look at that. Even her quad sweep popping out, man. It's fucking nuts. Look at that one there. What the fuck? That's it. Look at what's a come to this Have you seen this girl? Bruh. No, I've never seen this girl. Nick, just shoot her a message. Say, hey. I might have to. Oh, I think that's her boyfriend. Forget it. <laughs> oh, wait. Melissa's here. You want to see this one? Yeah. Whatever. Oh, my God. And go up go up higher to, like, the ones where she was, like, posing there. Like, like yeah. Wait, do you see this girl's legs? Yeah, the girl that won that Junior Nats, her name was uh, Ashton Penny. Yeah, oh, that she's girl. so cute. She she looked really good. Oh my god, look at those cool legs. That's Wait insane. Turned around. 
Wow. It's like bodybuilding. Her adductors are nuts. Yeah. I wonder if that's too muscular for the class. I don't, I don't know. She won. Look at this. No, no. I mean, in the pros, like, I don't, are the girls that big in the pros? Yeah. Look at, yeah. Her adductors are insane. How do you fucking arch your back like that? Jesus. Look at that. It's like your back. It's just broken. Ooh, just, what? I'm not, I'm just saying. Well, what are we going to do? Let's give a number. 10. What'd you give her, Nick? A 10. A 10. <laughs> ah. I mean, she's good. Yeah, on the on the wellness world. We got to rank her as a pro now, right? Because she's a pro. Yeah. Okay, 9.5. Yeah, I'll, I'll give her a, a 9.1. So she would go to the Olympia, you're saying, as I would, I would think so. I mean, this looks like an Olympia caliber physique to me. You know what? It's tricky, man. I, I've seen the girls that have been competing. And um, when they're like... How do you think she would do against, like, uh, what's her name? Yuri, Yurishna? No, who's the other one that won all those shows? The Angela? Oh, that the, one's pretty nutty, too. The, the blonde one. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's compare. Pull up the girl. What's her name? Ashton, that you said? The girl that just won the show, Nick. Was yeah. There. Let's compare. Her the Instagram name is a, a Lucky Penny. That, that one, yeah. Oh, she's a pro too. So they're both pros. He, now. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look, it's me. It's me. Just saying. And Nick's in the picture. Where? Where? <laughs> that's me, baby. It's a what video, but that's me. What were you thinking at that moment? I was thinking, like, cool. She won her pro card. No, you weren't, you fucking liar. You're putting that around, <laughs> you're putting that around her neck. You're like, mm, you're going to say something. No. Well, I can't. See, this is more what I thought wellness was. This girl's not as hard. She's, uh, you know, she's a little bit. I didn't. I don't know if they want them like that as hard as that other girl was. She crossed the stage, though. Man, those are short. I don't know. Are those? Le- it's like Ian said. Are those short legs, or is it angle she's taking this photo from? No, I think they are very. Most of them are very short. Yeah, look at the muscularity in their legs. I don't know. I, I can't tell the difference between this girl and the last girl. What? They look the same? Well, no. I just mean like I as far as No, I up, think she's a little softer. No, 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 softer. Yeah. I'm saying it this is twenty one. I, I mean in, in a sense of putting a number a number on them. I don't know. Like they're both tens to me. Like I don't I don't I can't judge the physique. Like I'm trying to find a physique shot. Well, one is still very new, so like I don't even know, you know, they're looking for. I mean, they both look great. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's. They're so young. They look really good. Like, they, <sighs> there's not very many physique shots here. Here's one. They'll be competitive. <coughs> this is, this girl's soft. Like, this is more what I thought wellness was. Yeah. yeah the, other, the other girl, the other girl is like really hard. The other girl's European, though. And I know that they always are a little harder in the bikini and the, yeah. and stuff yeah. like that in, in Europe. Tagged photos. See if we find a physique. Or a contest shot. There's some contest pictures. Yeah, that's more what I thought they were looking for. Yeah. So as far as, as physique structure goes, I think the other girl is what was her name? Victoria? Yeah. The second one right there. Yeah. So I think this girl's structure wise is a 10. I just think maybe she needs to be a little less hard for the stage. I don't know. It's hard to tell, man. I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm totally guessing. I'm not saying like that's, oh, yeah. I don't well, know. She's though. fucking hard. Yeah. What's her name? Angela, what? Angela or something. Go to search. One second, one second. I just want to see if there's another contest shot. Wait, there we go. Yeah. Look at the difference between this, these two girls she's and her. She's not short. She's, she's, she's hard, man. She looks great. Yeah. Oh, it's a different girl. Let me see that one. Yeah. Okay. What's the other girl? This is the one that's won like six shows this year. What's her name? Angela. Uh, Angela. This one? Yeah. Might be that yeah. one. Yeah. Four, four yeah. 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 Oh, this girl's great. This is like a 10 for me. Like yeah, well, this, girl's, this girl's won like every show. No, like, I mean, like, physique-wise, this is what I think 
like this is exactly what I think wellness is supposed to be. And obviously, if she's winning, I guess that's See, true, this. But. This looks closer to the European girl to me. Yeah, but yeah. Her, she, this girl's longer, man. Like her lines are longer and more athletic. I agree. Like I agree. It's, she's got more of an athletic structure. Like look how long her legs look. Yeah. Yeah, like so. Okay, so if this is a ten, that Victoria girl's what nine point five, nine point two. Yeah. Melissa, let's get Melissa's opinion. She's since she probably she said, eight, she said eight point five. If this is a ten, if this is a ten, yeah, I would say nine. I agree. With, yeah, nine. This is going to be hard to beat. I think so. Yeah, it's just this is like you know you, you know how you talk about Chris Ian. It's like a bigger girl's perfect midsection with like bikini girl upper body with like bodybuilder legs. Yeah, you know? but it's also like her presence. Yeah. Like, you know you talk about with Chris and how it just like has a look. Yeah, this girl has that look. It's just like a perfect. Yeah, it's exactly what you envision. Yeah. Okay, we can get away from that now. <laughs> Nick's Nick's lost. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's like, why are we leaving? Okay, um, we'll do a couple more. We'll just do one more. Well, um, why does it seem like most high level bodybuilders, even those on the podcast, with the exception of maybe Ian and Ben, actually know very little about gear? Actually, I'm glad that question came up. Uh, calling me stupid, <laughs> Nick. There's nothing wrong with saying we're not scientists. I'm not a scientist, but I know a thing or two. Here. I know, like, but this, but this is why. Just because I don't talk about it, I ain't no scientist either, so I don't know what the fuck he's. No, talking no, about. no. But this is why you know where you know where this is coming from. There's there's pages like uh, more plates, more dates, or stuff like that. Those guys are yeah. very, very, very smart, and they're very like well read on like pharmacology and all these different things. We're not. I don't. I'm, I'm not gonna speak for you guys. Me, my, that's not ever something I did. No, I, didn't, I, never, I never read. Either. I never read any fucking medical books. I never read anything about pharmacology. None, none of us are John Jewett, that's for sure. Yeah, like I, I don't know, but I don't know where this. Um, it's funny. It's like people think there's that. One, we think we know everything, and two, people put it on us. They're like, well, if they're that big, then they must know everything. And then when you don't, they're and then when you and then when you don't know everything, they're disappointed. On the flip side, I also don't think knowing all the exact pharmacology of all the steroids necessarily makes you better. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't think that. At, I don't think that at all. I just think, um, I think people put it on you. Yes. Like, like I don't think any of us has ever sat around and said, "I know everything about pharmacology and I know everything about every drug and everything about science." And, but I think people put it on us because we're bigger, that they assume we know everything, and then when we don't, they're fucking shocked. And yeah, they yeah. And, and they call you stupid, and I'm like, I never said I fucking know everything. I never said I studied medical books and all this shit. Like, so what? So the question is, why do people actually know very little about gear? I stud. I, I learned. Any? I don't think any of us know very little about gear. I learned enough that I needed to know to get where I'm at. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, I learned. pretty that's well. What I, that's what I learned. I didn't. I don't need to know. Um, I guess it sounds weird, but I, I don't feel like I need to know the intricacies of every drug and how it interacts in the body. No, exactly. I, I think I have a, a, a good, vast understanding of the drugs and how they should be utilized and why they should be utilized, but then getting down to the exact, you know, fucking pharmacology of how what interacts on what mechanism in the body and blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I could fucking care less about that. Right. Stuff. Okay. Uh, should we finish on a funner one? Yeah, yeah that was. I don't like that one. Sorry, 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 Nick. <laughs> uh, as you guys all like movies and TV, who is your favorite actor or actress? Oh, I got a better one for the for the girl for the woman crush. I totally forgot my favorite. My mm. wife, my wife had to remind me. Mm. Blake Lively, bro. That's so weird you just said that because what? literally as you said it in my head, 
I was going to say Blake Lively because Melissa has been watching Gossip Girl and she's one like of her. on it. I like her from the movie uh, Savages. Yeah. So when, yeah, I was watching, movie. when I was watching Gossip Girl, I was like, fuck, if we talk about this on the show, I'm going to throw out Blake Lively's name. And then you just said it. And it was like in my head. That was fucking weird. Look at that. I win. <laughs> You, you know who my is? second is? You know who my second is? Um, Kate Beckinsale. Yes, I agree That's with a you. Good one. <coughs> Especially from the vampire I mean, movies. I mean, shit too because she's fucking married to Ryan Reynolds and he's funny. So it's like, you know, girls like that. Like, that's why I picked. Um, yeah, that's a good girls one. Did I pick last time? Emily Blunt. Because she's married to fucking John Krasinski who's fucking funny. So, like, you know, these girls are like, are not. He's hot, like, bro. Quits, you know? I think Blake Lively's hotter. Blake oh, and Lively. then uh, this is one I missed too. Charlize Theron, yes. Totally fucking blanked out on that one. Yes. I was, I was Young, younger Charlize Theron, yeah. Not Charlize Theron with the uh, with the short hair, yeah. I'm not into that. I, I don't like mind it. I like the older I, I like it. the older Charlize too. No, I like a I'm little totally bit. Totally not against. There's nothing wrong with an older woman. No, I, I don't dislike older women. I just don't like how her swag has gone as she's got it. I know she got the whole bowl cut. There was, a, there was another one I fucking had in my head too. Fuck. Uh, what's her name? What's her name? Ah, fuck it. It'll come back to me one day. I like I like Jessica Alba. Yeah, that's a good one. What's uh Justin Timberlake's wife's name? Jessica Jessica Beals. Beale. That's a good one. I liked her in Blade Trinity. Je- Jessica Biel and Jessica Alba are like the classic, like if you were born in 1990s, those were like the hot girls as you were going. Yeah. Speaking of Justin Timberlake, I just watched the movie Palmer. It was fucking awesome. Great movie. Never yeah, man. It. It's on uh, Apple TV. Yeah, great movie. Yeah, it's really good. Oh, wait, didn't we watch that? Oh, yeah, that's where he's like... The, he gets, the out of jail, gets out of jail and he yeah, gets... Yeah, okay. yeah. Watch this. yeah. yeah. I didn't know what the name of it was, but yes, I have seen it. Um, so we're way off the question. As you guys all like movies and TV, who's your favorite actor or actress? Keanu Reeves. I got a, a, a Brad Pitt, yeah. man, a Brad Pitt man crush. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I. You know what? I like all Brad Pitt movies. Uh, George Clooney, Denzel Washington. Fuck George Clooney, but I'm 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 all Denzel's. Denzel. I'm looking on the Brad Pitt and Denzel for sure, especially Brad Pitt. He's he's sexy. I get down. I think that. I like Denzel movies better than Brad Pitt movies. Oh yeah, yeah. might be a, might be a, might be a toss up. What's Troy? That? Troy's really good though. Troy's amazing. Have you guys ever seen California with a K? I don't know. I don't think so. Brad Pitt. I don't think so. I think you guys, you guys, <laughs> you guys should watch it. It's a it's a good movie. Let me see if I can find a trailer so you guys can see what the cover looks like. Sick, uh, like thriller movie too. Is it him with the Samuel Jackson? What's that movie called? Seven. Seven. Yeah. Seven. That's a great movie. Yeah, great that's movie. a good movie. I just watched the new uh, Saw type movie with that has uh, Samuel in it, Spiral with Chris Rock. Yeah. Is it good? I I'm, I actually liked it better than Saw. Really? Yeah. Right, check it out. Oh, check not it out. not Saw one, but like all the other. Yeah, Saw yeah. Like, it's called it's yeah. called Spiral or something like that, right? Yeah. Check out uh, Bankers. Samuel L. Jackson's in that too. It's good. It's good. It's a true true story. I always always like true stories better. Than I that. just watched uh, Wrath of Man with Jason Statham. Mm. I saw that. It's that was good. good. It's like his, it. it's like his other movies. They're not like they're not going to win no fucking awards, but it's like it's no, it, was, it was good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're the only one with theaters open. Have you seen the new Fast and the Furious? I have not yet. I'm I'm going to go this <laughs> weekend. This is California. He plays a scrub. Wow, that's, wow. A, that's a different look for him. Fuck, eh? Yeah, he's really that good. A, he's almost good. Him. It's funny. I think people used to rip on him all the time because he's just like a good-looking like dude, whatever. But, but he's a fucking sick actor. Though. He's a great actor. He's a great man. actor. Amazing yeah. actor. So check out California. It's a good movie. All right. So I got Brad Pitt, Denzel Washington. Ian, you got Brad Pitt, Denzel Washington. Right? I got Keanu Reeves and Brad Pitt. Oh, Keanu Reeves and Brad Pitt. And who do you got, Nick? I want to go... Uh, Russell Crowe and Denzel. Russell, Russell Crowe Crow is a good one. Yeah, he's got some good. I, love, I like Russell. Yeah. Gladiator is my favorite. You know movie. Russell Crowe. Gerard, Gerard Butler is a good one. Gerard Butler is a good one. Three hundred. You, know, you know Russell Crowe is the kind of guy that you could like hang out and like drink a beer and like smoke yeah. a joint and talk some like nasty shit. Like this guy would like fucking talk shit. You know. I know. 
my camera's dead. Oh. Well, I guess that's our XEQ. You got to let it cool off, man. <laughs> what? Is it like 2,000 degrees in your basement? Why is your camera always overheating? I have to change the setting. Can you guys still hear me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can hear you just fine. I'm just going to do the whole podcast like this or not. I have, yeah. to, change, <laughs> I have to change the setting on my camera to, to make it ignore the heat. Yeah, yeah. Okay, anyway, I guess we'll go. Who's the favorite girl actor? No, I got to do girl actor real quick. Oh, yeah, we do have to do girl actor. Favorite female actor. I'm back. I'm going to go, ah, oh, fuck. I'm going to go with Sandra Bullock. No, come on. I like, she's a great actor. Why is my voice, my voice is cracked three times this podcast. I'm what? not basing it off looks, I'm basing it off act, act, actress. Yeah, what but. What actors do I like, babe? The Blind Side, great movie. Blind Side's a good movie. This congeniality is pretty awesome too. That's a great movie. <laughs> I can't think of any fucking actresses right now. I had fucking drawn a blank. One second. Famous. I'm just staying with my Emily Blunt on this one, you know. <laughs> okay, let's look at famous actors. Edge Morrow. You ever seen Edge of Tomorrow? No. Yes. Oh there wait, yeah, where she where she dies and keeps coming back. Tom Cruise. That's a yeah. fucking sick movie, man. That All is right. a really good movie. I'll give you that one. I hate this girl. I can't remember. Her. Was it? Is that? No, it's not. Uh, oh, I don't like her neither. Oh yeah, what's her name? Um, fuck. What's this girl's who, name? Who cares? Um, the girl from the Princess Diaries. Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway. Yeah. Yeah, you know, for that. Um, I'm trying to think of a female actress I really, really like. Courtney Cox. She's yeah. good. Come on now. Well, I just mean from Friends. Um, Julia Roberts. That's a good one. Great movie. Great a- actress. Yeah. And then uh, what's her name? This girl. I can't remember. Her Angel- name. It's Angelina, Angelina Jolie. Jolie. Yeah, she's really. That's I a like good. Scarlett, jo- Scarlett Johansson's good too. Angelina Jolie's a good woman crush too. I like I like Ke- Kiera Knightley. Mm-hmm. What's the best movie you've seen the girl in that you're naming? Me. Anybody, if you name a girl that you like, what's the best movie that you can name her in? Edge of Tomorrow. I already said it. You said Edge of Tomorrow. I'm gonna go with the Blind Side for my Blind Side. I can't name that. I can think of off the top of my head. Does that mean I'm really sexist if I can't name Mr. Mrs. Smith? That's that's a good. That's a good movie. I can't name a like. Oh, I love her. Oh, Oh, what's the girl? You know who I really like? What's the girl from uh, Zero Dark Thirty? Oh, yeah, she's good. Um, ah, she's what like, is her name? She's like one of my favorites. Jessica Chastain. What's her name? Jessica Chastain. Really? Yeah. This girl and the girl from uh, The Fighter. Oh, dude, she was in some movie I just watched on Netflix. She was badass. And yeah. the girl the girl from The Fighter. What's her name? Um, uh, what's her name, babe? From The Fighter? I don't know. Yeah, she dates... Mark uh, She dates Wahlberg, yeah. This girl. Yeah, um, uh, Amy Adams. Amy, Amy Adams. Adams. I like her. I like her a lot too. They're both redheads. Maybe I got a thing for redheads. I didn't. You got know. a thing for the redheads here. Yeah, I like her a lot. Amy Adams. She was good. All right. I believe she was in Wedding Crashers. No. Yeah. I don't think so. I'm gonna look it up. No, that's the other girl. You talking about the little redhead? Yeah. No, man, that's not her. You sure? Positive. You're talking about this girl. It's yeah. Not the, not the same girl. It's not the same girl. No, no. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what her. I don't know what this girl's name is, but it's not the same girl. Oh. All right. All right, boys. Okay. Next week. Yeah. Okay, man. We'll talk then. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find Hostile and myself. And lastly, check out Hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching.